Uh, so given that the whole town board is here, I wanted to just have a motion to open our work session. So can someone please Motion move? to open the work session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. So I wanted to welcome back our uh, working group joined by the rest of the town board uh, today. And uh, I thought it would be helpful. I don't know if everyone knows each other. Just go around and, and introduce ourselves. You, Eldad, do you want to start? Yes. Uh, Eldad got health uh, on the town planning board. Oh. See you all again. Tom oh, really done by Stanley Wong, VAR. Uh, Bob Shank, a lot of teacher board. Allie Shemtop, town board. Vicki Tim, town board. Scott, town supervisor. Jeremy Swain, town board. Allie McCall, town board. Ed Phillips, town board. Okay, great. So, and we also have, in case we have questions, I see Jeff Davis here from the developer as well. Um, and Andrew's on the Zoom, oh. architect. Oh, yes, and Andrew's on the Zoom. Hi, Andrew. <laughs> uh, all right, so, um, so speak up if you, Andrew, if you want to say anything, so, because we're, you're kind of sideways to us, so we may not always see you. Um, all right, so I think, we made a lot of good progress last time um, when the working group met. And I think we really sat down and talked about, you know, constructive changes that we thought should be made. And I thought it went very well. I think the developer did as well. They really had to kind of a, some directions as how to move forward. Um, I know some of the members of the town board uh, were also uh, on that call, but this is a great opportunity for, um, everyone to get together because some of the decisions we're going to make ultimately need to be voted on by us. So it um, it's helpful to have us all together. Um, rather than sort of rehab, like take three steps backwards, I thought it would be helpful to, to start where we kind of ended off and the developer took the uh, concepts we discussed at the last um, work session and revise the plan somewhat, which I know the town board seems, you, you guys have copies of this? Yeah. yeah. Can you have copies? Okay. So I thought it would be good to discuss those changes um, in light of where we were, and then to talk about um, how it relates to the legislation, because ultimately that's what we're, we're going to vote on. I think there are portions of this um, related to you know, site plan that really can be tinkered with afterward once that next step is taken and that's brought before the board and obviously that's going to be referred to the, the ARB and to the planning board as well for, for input. So why don't we start with the changes that were made Reference page. on the agenda? No, 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 I don't know if it's fine. Andrew can put it up also. Oh yeah, we can put, oh right, Andrew can put it up on the big screen, that might yeah, be easier. Yeah. Well, we did have the is this what we had last week yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, that's helpful. So why don't, um, why the, does someone from the either developer or Andrew, do you want to walk us through the changes that you made here and what those are responsive to? Yeah, I'd be happy to, to walk you through it briefly. And I know Jeff is available to add some in-person uh, commentary as necessary. So the uh, request that we had received at the last working session, which uh, is that three weeks ago, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, the dates are slipping a little bit. Um, the, the primary requests were um, add additional retail to expand the presence of public facing programming along North Greeley, um, which meant uh, displacing some of the amenity program that we had originally located, specifically the, the bicycle storage was shifted. Uh, one of the changes that we had alluded to that would be required was uh, the slight revision of the mapping in response to the discovery of a, an unrecorded sewer easement, which you can see uh, at the northern end of the site in the diagonal half. Uh, and so that location uh, based on the easement language that's been provided to us uh, by the county. Uh, no structure uh, can be built on that. Uh, so they have full air rights. It's a 12 foot wide strip. Um, and uh, effectively given its location in the site, it, it precludes us from, from really realistically building anything on that northern um, 35 feet 
uh, of, of the street um, at the northern end of the site. Uh, in order to accommodate some of these things, uh, we've had to shift around some of the, the cores. Uh, so the egress cores have, have moved slightly. Uh, and then the parking has also uh, slightly changed. Uh, we've identified where a service vehicle could, could be parked within the parking structure. And then there's also, uh, again, because of this easement, uh, we have an opportunity perhaps to locate uh, a service vehicle um, at the northern end of the site where we, we can't build any structures, um, utilizing an existing curb cut uh, uh, onto North Freely. Uh, so those are, I'd say, the, the, the broad changes. Um, and, and you can see that mostly played out here at the first level. Um, the, there are some kind of repercussions of these changes uh, in terms of the apartment layout. And specifically, it's the loss of three units um, due to the elimination uh, of that northern portion of the building. Uh, so, so right now, uh, as it stands, this is a 42 unit project um, based on those um, updated restrictions uh, and then so we've included uh, in the packet a revised uh, zoning and building uh, data table uh, so this is a similar um, uh, spreadsheet that we've included uh, in previous submissions just to kind of give a sense of some of the, the, the quantitative metrics um, and and now uh, we've updated that to reflect the, the new massing uh, uh, site rallies. Um, I, I will say, um, and, I, and I imagine this will be a topic of discussion. So there were a number of you know, these were the primary points of conversation in the last working group session. Um, in the interim, there have been additional uh, uh, board meetings as, as well as circulation of legislation drafts um, that would continue to revise this. And so, um, you know, we're, you know, this. Uh, I guess how to, to frame this is that we're trying to respond to what we identify as kind of concrete requests that uh, we, we are given by a consensus. Um, what is difficult for us to do in kind of live time is to uh, study the, the myriad permutations of the building that could arise out of various drafts of legislation and design suggestions that have been um, provided to us by uh, various board members in the general public. So. Um, you know, happy to continue this discussion, but that's that's the, where the current plan sits in relation to those previous working group requests. Okay. And how many how many uh, working and, and uh, uh, lower income properties uh, units are are there? Does it stay the same even though we reduce the total units? It should. We did the math. It shouldn't change. Yeah. Five. Uh, five plus one. The or six affordable. Right. Right. Do we need? Can can people not hear us? Like, do we need to move these over oh, did here? You, did you not hear me? By the way, uh, I I could I could hear you, but Jeff is better suited to answer that question. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. It drops down by three units, so it would be five total. Five, 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 five. Round up, so it's a hair over five goes to six. We can talk about it. No, that's what the, that's okay. You and I can debate things, but I think you should table that for now. I, so, I, I think, think that's, that's an important question. Yeah, why? Yeah, why do you have to table that? Well, if we're going down to 43 units, 12% of 43, I think is, and if you want to do the math, it's just over five. And if you round, round up. up. So, all right. I, I think there needs it's to be a continued global discussion yeah. as the last round of legislation completely one changed one everything. One I think we need to come back and talk. There's a lot of open questions that we have based on the last legislation. And from our conversation at the last meeting last week, we were gonna go pen to paper on the legislation. Mm -hmm. And I hope that's what we're gonna do because we have a lot of open questions. There's parking fees that we're told we're gonna to have to pay. So what is that parking fee gonna be? And we'll respond over how many affordable units are gonna be. Right? We're happy to work with everybody and if it's six is the number, it also has to be how many units, what are the setbacks. It can't just be continued to push and pull us every which way and say it has to be this, 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 and this. I, I, you said I can't speak on behalf of the board, so I'm not attempting to do so, but the legislation is a legislation, right? So if, if it's rounding up and that's, that's what it is, that's what it is. Um, but we'll certainly cross whatever bridges we need to cross. Some of these things are married together, I'm assuming, and some of these things are not. But for the sake of this conversation, we're not going to... It is what it is right now. I think there's other issues to. It wasn't. That wasn't always the conversation at one point in time. The legislation was told us 
oh wait, now it's rounding up, and we didn't ever say yes. And so, so I think you know I can be told and sit here all the time and say this is what you have to do. I've been sitting here for a year, frankly, and trying to work with everybody, and I'm here doing so again. And again, I'm sitting here being told, oh no, you're still doing six units, even though your unit count's going down. And oh wait, we changed the parking language in the last draft that doesn't so, make the project work. you know, that's why we're, we're here, here. working to get to a solution, and I'm happy to get there together. So that's why we're here, and we're going to go through the legislation, and you know, the town board is going to talk and figure out what what makes sense. I know. There were some proposed changes in the legislation that we discussed um, at our meeting last time that we, I think the board generally was not comfortable with some of those changes. So um, I think it might be helpful, uh, and we obviously want to hear from the working group as to your thoughts on those changes in the legislation and what's, what's in them, what makes sense um, for this project uh, and you know this special permit. So, Ed, it might make sense if you wanted to walk us through that legislation. I'm going to bring Sabrina in because she wasn't <laughs> here. She was, uh, had a conflict last week. And she's um, a better person can I bring to speak up, you know, to many of these. Before we start on the legislation, because we didn't really have a set agenda for the for this working group meeting, which yeah, is fine. It was, it was to talk about the legislation. Just the legislation. Because, Generally, um, yeah. I also wanted to talk just conceptually about um, the public spaces and how that would bring vibrancy to the hamlet. So that's something that's important to me. Um, and I'd like to find room to discuss that as well. So we made those. Yeah. Right. So I think, Andy, you made that question came up last time. And, you know, what, why can, uh, I think the changes that were made. So I, I did ask them if they could color code this when they presented right. to us. So the green areas are all public spaces, not for any resident in the community, not just for this building on this level. I'm going to walk through no, I mean, I, I'm clear about the public spaces. I just, I know that there were discussions within the, you know, the last working groups about whether the public spaces here are, are really adequate to engage the community and bring vibrancy to the downtown Hamlet. And I know you talked about activating um, the bottom, you know, the pedestrian space. And so, you know, some of us were not at that meeting, but I thought it was, I listened to the tape and I thought it was a really important discussion that you have. I know Eldad, I remember you saying, well, never mind about the upstairs. I want to know what's going to happen here on the street. I mean, we are getting more housing. Housing is important, but bringing vibrancy to the Hamlet is also important. And so I just wanted to explore that with you a little bit more to see what your thoughts are about whether this really accomplishes that. and what we can do if it doesn't. So uh, if I can, oh, sorry. If I could just weigh in briefly, just from, from our perspective, uh, just to make a, a, a broad comment. Uh, and I think this is a point that Jeff shares. Uh, one, of, one of the challenges that, that we had in responding uh, exactly to this request for additional activated public space is that we have had, we've received uh, directly conflicting requests for additional street wall. Um, close to 50 North Greeley uh, within 10 feet, which would uh, actually decrease the amount of public space. And so one of the challenges I'll, I'll just state is um, we, we seem to be receiving uh, requests, uh, both in terms of building design and the text of the regulation, which are directly contradictory. Um, and it would be helpful uh, if the legislation, when, when revised and crafted, could explicitly state uh, I think to your point, what are the priorities of the town? Um, is it public space? Is it street frontage? Um, what are those um, both value sets and kind of quantitative regulations to support the value sets so that we can uh, respond to it architecturally? Yeah, I right. agree. So, I agree Andy, with you. the changes yeah. that were in the legislation that you're responding to are ones that were kind of inserted last week that the town board didn't really discuss or add for that matter. That's what one of the things we were going to discuss today. 
you know, I and to see what what made sense in in that regard. But you know, at to Vicky's point, at the last work session, I know you and Holly were at the meeting on Zoom, so you know we did talk about that and activating the space, and that was I think one of the reasons why. Um, I believe it was Tom's suggestion to move kind of the bike rack and all that area toward kind of more north so that this new red area could bring more vitality. It was more retail space and more uh, general space for people to sit and congregate and and enable that whole, the red area is the, is the retail, enable that entire area really now to be activated. So, you know, is that what was anticipated. I, I, I just wanted to hear from Tom and Eldad because yeah, they have the I'm expertise asking. and I, I'd like you to know, aside from Lisa's very specific questions, I'd just like to know your thoughts in general about whether you think this is the best way to bring vibrancy to this to the Hamlet and activate the public space. So I'll start, please. Um, again, happy to be having this discussion because these are these are the things that matter to our town. There's a, lot, a legacy here. And as I've said before, this is the reason that I joined the planning board to talk about projects like this. So it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have these debates. Um, and yes, you're completely right. I've, I've said multiple times publicly um, that what happens above the ground floor is to me less important, except for the fact that I want more housing and I want more affordable housing. So that question of how many uh, affordable housing is critical. And if it means he's going to knock it down by one unit to lose one unit of affordable, Undoubtedly, they're going to do it. It's just simple math. The one to one, that's a one to one ratio for him uh, in the wrong direction. But so we need to think about that as you know, because maximizing affordable housing is absolutely also a priority for me and it should be, I think, for our town, which I believe it is. Um, so above ground, less important for me when it comes to design um, for me. Um, <laughs> But at the at the at the ground level, from an urban planning and an urban design standpoint, it's critical that we make uh, the best choices that we can uh, to plan for success. It's not a guarantee, right? And we're absolutely at the at the whim of market forces, right? We could plan the best and design and build the most beautiful project, and then if the economy tanks and the stores are completely vacant, people aren't going to come. And if the units are vacant, there's not going to be the demand for the stores, right? So we can't guarantee anything. However. There are better choices and worse choices, and what we're suggesting is to think sort of in the best way to activate the ground floor, because that's the part where uh, our town interacts with the building. Mm -hmm. well so um, one of Tom's suggestions was right to move the bike rack to have more retail along North Greeley so that there will be more activity. I talked about glazing windows so you can see it, not brick walls, not mechanical space, not parking space, not bike parking space, but, but something that will draw people. And even windows draw people, right? You see activity, you see what's behind the store. Um, so that was one of the changes made here. And um, I applaud the flexibility of, of the applicant here um, because there, there's a willingness to try to figure this out. So I appreciate that. Um, we got a comment just today or yesterday from, okay. from um, a member of the public, but a former uh, planning board member that had a lot of great points that were in line with some of the things we we're talking about, which is thinking through how do we make the best public spaces. And he was suggesting and something we've discussed a little bit is that the shape of this retail space um, may not be the most conducive towards uh, successful retail. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I wonder, I don't want an answer just yet, but I wonder if the applicant has considered or done studies or looked at um, what could, what type of retail could fit in these places. One specific change that I've been thinking about is the retail space on the southernmost corner or the left the southernmost portion of the site or the leftmost portion of the site where it has sort of it comes out uh towards uh i guess that's susan lawrence mm -hmm. i would flip that that sort of dog like the other way to me that does two things it creates a more uniform rectangular retail space and it creates a um a larger publicly accessible open space right at the corner, creating maybe more room for uh, outdoor dining and kind of create sort of a moment at the corner, the south corner of the site, so that there's like a around both sides of the site, uh, the corner there, there's uh, active open public space. So Elda, I'm sorry to interrupt. So you would swap the bottom red portion all the way to the left with the public court, like the second public court, like just flip them. Yeah, something like that. Again, not an architect, no, not a designer, but I would sort of, if, if that's possible, because it sort of solves two problems. 
maybe creates a thousand more open to that possibility. But you know, we need to think. But you know, this this uh, I received this drawing last week. I'm again appreciative of the of the willingness to to design on the fly, and I don't envy uh, uh, Andy's job of just trying to like. It's a moving target. Uh, I get that, um, but you know this this this, this sheet shows four thousand eight hundred square feet of public space. That, that's amazing as a number, but like, how much of it is usable? How much of it is good? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, so we need to think of how to make the best public spaces that we can that interact with the private spaces because it is sort of like the quasi public and private uh, interaction there. I'll turn it over to my colleague. And just so you know, I that letter we got with those comments that were from a former planning board member. I actually forward them to the developer because I thought they were they were good comments and yeah. that they might want to look at them in terms of incorporating some of those as well. And we can respond. Andrew and I went through it earlier. Um, it does do th two things. Andrew and I actually spoke about because what it does is it takes the retail space um, in front of the first public court that says 930 square feet. It makes it deeper. It takes that utility space and flips it where the bike space was, but it does exactly the opposite of what the direction was from this last meeting was to extend that retail space along Greeley because it would do the opposite. It would put a utility space right on Greeley in front of what would be an open area or a dining area for retail. So in one way, it makes that retail space deeper. Um, I don't know, Andrew, if you have the dimensions of the retail box, by chance? Well, well yeah, I, I can I can weigh in, and, and I, I agree uh, with the concern about the uh, added retail space where the bicycle storage was previously located. We actually it, it used it was previously only ten feet deep, which was suitable for bicycle storage, but but woefully inadequate for retail. We managed to increase it slightly to thirteen feet deep, which is. Um, not much better uh, objectively it would take a creative tenant to occupy that space um, or or some kind of display storefront um, there are certainly examples of people utilizing unusually uh, dimensioned retail spaces the, the benefit here is that it has a significant amount of frontage which would be attractive to a potential tenant um, as opposed to a narrow and deep space with limited frontage and, and natural light i mean one of one of the uh Options that we've discussed would be, uh, I think, in line with some of the comments made uh, by um, the former planning board member, which, which, which we've reviewed, is, is you know that public court labeled at 570 square feet, a portion or in the entirety of that could be converted to retail. It would enable that to be a larger, more uh, commercially viable retail space. It would do so at the detriment of the public space, which has been a request, um, and would increase the retail space, which we've also received requests about the retail space being too large. So again, we're, I think what Jeff is, and I are both saying is that we're, we're happy to look at any number of um, solutions that address the, the requests and concerns of the town. Um, it's just that we're receiving multiple requests um, that are contradictory. I guess so. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm, seeing is, yeah, it would take away some of that public space, but by kind of flipping it a little bit, we would gain more on the corner that we think might be more uh, of better use. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just weigh in with that particular comment. So just for everyone's reference, there is a, a building, and I'll highlight it here. There is a building volume that sits above that space. And so if you were to uh, uh, open that corner, You'd be doing so to a to an entirely covered public space. Um, so it would have um, it would not be um, perhaps as open as some of the other spaces which we've identified, which would be open to you know open to above, uh, without again without dr dramatically changing the the mapping and the area of the project. So where does that leave us? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll, I'll flip to the upper plan just so everyone can kind of see where that lands um, as they stack. Well, thank you, Got it. Andrew, um, I'm, and I'm happy to take credit for, if, if, if credit's due, for moving the bike rack off the uh, <laughs> off the street. But I do not want to take credit for this retail space. It wasn't my my intention, to the extent that we're allowed to be so forward and having intentions. It wasn't my suggestion to uh, put retail there. 
Uh, it just wasn't. And this is why, because this is a retail space, which is going to take a lot of invention and a lot of faith in order for it to actually work. 13 feet is, it essentially, uh, Andrew, you're right, I think, when you said it's uh, probably not much more than a display window depth. I mean, I guess you could put a, some sort of a gallery in there. But I think that one of the things that we'd be looking for here, and we've talked about this for a long time, is reliable ground floor tenancies, ones that have legs, ones that are going to stick around for a while. We don't, I think, want to put uh, North Greeley at risk for vacancies of any type. And what we, in this community, the most reliable tenancy is residential. That's the business we're in. And as a concept, it's not to say that we don't want some storefronts there. I think it would be, I think the diner's a great idea. Um, I was just over at, at Bedford Diner about a half hour ago, and that place is like full. And I think that would be a great thing to put there on the corner where mm -hmm. it's uh, currently being thought of. Mm -hmm. But I worry about retail marching up the street. Um, it is a dead end street. Um, if, if retail was a viable option there, I think there would be a lot more retail there. Uh, I think that in this particular configuration, it's just going to be something we can't rely on. I think it's going to be a tough sell. So if everybody's sold on retail, I think we need to reconfigure it to the point where you get you get a, a tenant who's going to look at a lease uh, a, a tenant lease letter and say, "This I can do, I can live here." And if that tenant fails, then another tenant or another kind of business has an opportunity to say, "Yeah, this will work for me as well." And so there are there are basic dimensions of these things and basic uh, characteristics of them storage area, access to trash and garbage, all of those things go into just regular sort of leasing. And it's, there's no magic here. It's very, very simple and straightforward. And it's not represented in this plan right now. Um, if there's a way to deal with it, um, I think that's fine. Um, I do also understand, Andrew, you drew that line there um, on the southern corner. And you're right, that's a three-story building overhanging that space. So if we're going to flip around retail and put it somewhere else and say that's the open space, that's open space under a three-story building with a 15-foot floor to probably less than 15-foot floor to ceiling height in there. So I don't think that that's, that, that idea will necessarily work for this plan. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. So Jeff, you're the developer and obviously I imagine if you were going to build retail space, you want it to succeed. So, I mean, what do you think in your experience as the rentability of that new retail space? So let's just go back to three weeks ago when we were asked to do this exercise. Is he on the microphone? No. I mean, okay. they're in the ceiling, I guess. Three weeks ago, we were asked to program the street level for additional retail and additional open space. Mm -hmm. We sat there and said, this was difficult space to do. That's why we put the bike space there with open space in front of it so that at least the open space was public spacing fa public facing space so it would be activated. It was glazed space and we tried to show renderings at that point in the meeting, but it got away from us. Um, and that's why we color coded this to show the amount of open space that we were providing to the community, because it is an oddly shaped parcel that tapers down towards that side of the project. At a point in time, you just cannot fit it unless you do what Tom suggested that night is just make the building smaller, reduce the parking and just make it all that much smaller. Here we were trying to maximize what we could put in there. Andrew and I talked about flipping that utility space and making the retail deeper there. This was not the first iteration we showed you guys. But what we did say was that was a bike space that was not generating income. It could be retail space now. And you know what? Since it wasn't generating income, maybe we could do it as a community slash retail space that could be an art space that could be somewhat community orientated with the kids doing a display in part of it, or it could be a walk up wine bar. Look, 
the biggest problem with retail space is that typically in a town like this, where you have one story of retail and one story of apartments, your retail rents have to be so high to justify to pay your mortgage. That's why restaurants and a lot of retail doesn't work. But if you have retail where our apartments are paying 95% of the bill, and we have a small piece of retail that we can be creative with, it can be an immersive experience, it can be something different, that if the rent isn't the driver for it, but the use is the driver, that we want to make it something interesting, then we can all be creative here. But if it's the dollars driving the space, then it doesn't work because you're trying to pay your bills. But here, that's found retail space we can be creative with. That makes it interesting and makes it something that we can all work to do. But if you're just creating a box and that box has to pay your bills, that's when you end up having space that doesn't work because you're just using it to pay a bill. So it sounds like then that space can be activated in terms of street use, even if it doesn't, even if it's not profitable. It's not in my that's numbers. That's okay. That space. It's, but it will activate the space because you could put in whatever. We're, makes sense. we're trying to be creative with it with the intention of we were asked to make it activated. For it. So but Tom, if the goal that, is. Yeah. that this should be apartments on the ground floor of the building. I'm going to sit here confidently and tell you this section to make apartments on the ground floor with the project designed here doesn't work because well, and that's you're going to eat into it anyway. And this isn't the project that was designed. Can I just, I, I want to make sure we don't gloss over something super interesting that, that mm -hmm. the, the applicant just said, is that there's a willingness to give up 500, I, I don't know how much, five, seven, 800 square feet of space uh, as community space, which uh, well, I, I absolutely welcome. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't go there. That's what well, I know. But what I said the other night was we can take a portion of that space that we just came up with that could be, and maybe we can come up with some creative way to work with, maybe part of it becomes a display case for the art program. Maybe part of it becomes immersive experience. I don't know that it's 800 square feet that just becomes community space, but maybe we come up with some plan that works, that something's great for the community. Look, the kids blew me away. What was it, two weeks ago we were sitting here? Mm -hmm. I don't know who was here for that meeting. It blew me away. The fact that high school kids came and spoke up in a meeting was fantastic, right? So why not have something for the community in part of this space, however many square feet? Andrew, I don't know how many, I don't, it's not on here. How much is that new space? Yeah. Uh, so, so the area, and I'll highlight it in red. So, so that zone, uh, kind of the, the narrow portion that would be difficult, I would say, to conventionally rent. That is eight hundred eighty-four square feet, as currently drawn. So, if arguably that was like a wine bar with a rotating art gallery from students, that, you know. What? How likely do you think that is? What? That that space could translate into what's being suggested. You're asking me. I'm asking three architects sitting at this table. I think it's super narrow. I don't know that it's going to function yeah. very well. I mean, not, not as a wine bar, but I think as, a, as an open gallery. I mean, you see pop-up galleries in the city in, in these interstitial spaces all the time, and I think they're, they work like that, but is, is there going to be enough uh, you know, school involvement to keep that active and alive and something for just I, I think it could go beyond school. I mean, school involvement yeah. would be great as well, but I think, you know, we would do some outreach to the art community and, um, you know, make it known that there's a space. But I, what I'm mostly interested in is not so much the dollars and cents of retail, although that, that is really helpful for a tax base. We would need that. But I'm interested in seeing that people want to come to our downtown. Yeah. And we want to make it vibrant, and that's what what will make it vibrant and that's what and will successful. make the other retail mm -hmm. successful that's what will make people want to come here and live here it, it'll make the apartments desirable we don't want vacancies in the apartment so you know we have a certain amount of retail space here that is consistently vacant and okay. i i'm not sure that there's a lot of room for a heck of a lot more retail but i think that if we think beyond dollars and cents to something more creative, we'll get the people down here to make the retail that we do have viable. Also depends on what you're asking in rent. 
Yeah, so I don't rent's know paying your mortgage and you only have right a few now. apartments above it. It makes it harder that that rent dollar has to be the driving factor. Right. right? Exactly. But the point is, I actually don't think we have that much vacant space right now, but no matter what it is, as long as we're bringing people downtown and it's enhancing the vitality, that's what we want. Which is why and the that's space the has area, to, you know, we, we said right. yeah. we always we have to want set them up for success. Yeah, we want to get residential as we continue up that street. But right there is a space that can be not necessarily profitable, but bringing vitality because even if it is, let's say, an art space, and we have a very small one on top of Family Bridges right now that gets a lot of people there when they have a gallery. So, you know, if it brings people up to that space, then it does, to Vicki's point, help to enhance the rest of the retail and the rest of the restaurants and everything else. I think vitality and profitability, though, are kind of tied together. I, I don't, you know, I think we have to think about, I love the idea of something for our children and for the community, but that's not going to be enough to activate the, tech, the downtown, right? That's oh, I, I, I I'm not sure. I, 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 I think agree. you may underestimate I how motivated what else is there, though? Starbucks parents closes. are. What else? No, but I, what I'm saying is, you know, if you've got a diner and a, something that's showing um, art of the kids, don't underestimate how motivated those parents are to Oh, I'm not. I'm saying there has to also be a diner, though. It can't just oh, no. be. There, there's got to be. There's got to be. That tiny little space. It was no, a, I know. It was but there's got to be an anchor, yeah. right? Yeah. There's got to be an anchor. We, we're it's not going to be just the tiny little space. We were talking about space. the small we No, I understand. But I'm space. saying, big picture, we have to make sure that this, we can't think about just this little piece. We have to think of it. The retail space has to be a success. And it can't just be this one little piece that we're thinking about. We have to give reasons it can't just be that we have to make no, no, sure we talked about reasons. the diner i mean i think know. that gives you room for a diner and some legitimately sized retail space but you know our options with that small red portion that's to the north that andy had just highlighted we basically have two options it's going to be some sort of activating use or it's not it's going to be a residential use so i think what this town board has to decide and this working group is that going to be an activating use or is it going to be part of the residential is it going to be a bike rack or utility room again that's that's it that's so the question I, I have to just make a suggestion that the characterization of a residential street not being an active street i think is not it's not correct i think that's not accurate it may not be the kind of active environment that you have pictured but it doesn't mean that it's a it's a place which is a dead zone far from it so i'd like to sort of be careful about how we use these use these terms well right but the you know town board had discussed that we have an opportunity with north Greeley, which is a straight flat street to actually enhance our retail and there is retail across the street from where this building is right now there's a verizon across the street there's, there's a verizon but there's also there's an opportunity, opportunity shop. shop there's a there's Just, a personal trainer I, 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 you don't interrupt me there are things down there so to me yes people will be coming out of the building but it's not bringing anyone other than those people into that building you're not going to get people coming to downtown we want to see what the lobby looks like no you're only going to get the people who live there so to me if we have the opportunity and and this town board and the prior town board and a million, you know, not a million, but a significant number of residents <laughs> talked about, you know, having the opportunity to actually bring some more vitality down there that will will bring people to town, other than the people living in the building. But we can't just create it for the sake of creating. It has to be something that works, and, and it doesn't strike me as something will work based on what I'm hearing. Tell me if I'm mischaracterizing it. There's a concern, at least, that that little itsy bitsy space just for the sake of having retail is not going to be something that's be that valuable. Well, I, I think so in this particular image, I think that it's a problem. I think that, you know, that, that's what I'm so, saying. So, this, so do you want them to return it to a bike no, so, so this, this is why, why do you see well, that? I almost wonder, wonder. Even, even the left half of the orange, is that really deep and large enough for a commercial kitchen? I mean, dining, food and beverage is the best way to get people to cluster. The town can get more restaurants. It'll, it'll feed off itself and people will come and go to other ones. 
Yeah, so I, I wonder if the orange to the left is even really deep enough for those what are they, 10, 12 foot bays? What are the columns there? Andrew, what's the depth? Those are 12 foot bays. Sure. Yeah, so so the so the depth the depth here uh, is approximately 30 feet, where I've highlighted, just for reference. I mean, and, and again, this is uh, uh, we're taking a lot of requests simultaneously. Uh, and so if we're able to find a position where uh, concrete programmatic uh, decisions are made about where particular elements would like to be located and which particular elements are not as critical, we can, again, redraw the plans to best accommodate particular concerns. I, I, I will, I'll just do, to quickly return to uh, the characterization of the, of the two binary options for the northern portion of the retail, I would, I would say one other um, scenario would be that you increase uh, the area of retail by eliminating public space. Like that would be a solution to make it more um, market palatable. But again, it's at the expense of another request that we received to create as much crenellated public space along North Greeley as possible. So um, I'll, just, I'll just leave it there. So, so there are trade-offs, but I think you want to, you've got a whole strip. I mean, I, I agree with the idea of having a visual uh, activated linear frontage of the whole building, but when it becomes so narrow, it really isn't so productive. Maybe you're better off having half of it really terrific and deep that you'll get a really good food restaurant and maybe the other half use architectural features, but you won't get that transparency and that one activation, but, but at least you'll get half of it that'll really work and be terrific. So. I'm not saying you should flip the red and the utility, but in a sense, <clears throat> if you did that, the left half would, would be a really good solid retail space at the terrific restaurant. And the right half, well, how do you decorate it? How do you make it look architecturally nice? Because it's really dead space. But are you better off having half terrific and half dead, or all of it activated, but not really functional? De dead, I get what you mean. Dead is also an overstatement. It's not dead if it's an open space. It's just not. Some open spaces Generally. are dead. No, no, some are not. Like no, no, I, I'm, set, I'm, I'm not saying I have a game. So I just, I just want to, I, I just, I have to say that I do feel the frustration of the applicant, um, and it's because, and I've said this before, you know, this process is backwards. What we're doing now is, you know, they've come to us with a design, and now we're saying, well, we care about X and we care about Y, so they're kind of chasing some of our cares where. We really should be leading with our values, which again, to me, comes back to like the zoning of it all, uh, and saying what do we as a town want? Now, I understand we're, we're the horse has left the barn on that. Right? We, we we are debating this, but that's why this process is so challenging. Is there's a design out there, and then there are the town principles, and some of them mesh, and some of them don't, and we're also kind of trying to figure out what our um, competing principles are, and it sometimes does feel a little bit like whack-a-mole, right? Like, okay, we want open space, so now, but now we've created a new problem. So we want good retail, now we've created a different problem. Um, you know, these are challenges that um, I understand uh, why there might be frustration on the side of the applicant and the architect. They're trying to respond to a bunch of different thoughts. And so I do think, though, what still we do have the opportunity to say, this is what's important to us, and then um, ask them to meet the be to the best of their abilities, you know, because last time we had the working group, Tom had a good suggestion. So why are we having a bike rack at the at the street front? And so they went and they said, okay, well, it's not a bike rack, it's retail. Now we came to them and said, this retail doesn't work. And they said, well, you told us to make it retail. Well, we didn't. We said we want an active street front. We didn't say it had to be 13 feet deep. I understand why they made that change. I think we need to put some, you know, uh, desirable principles out there and then let them, to, you know, come back with the best project that they can. If, if 13 feet of retail here doesn't make sense, and they're not willing to give it up as uh, community space entirely, uh, because it can be likely decent community space, uh, certainly if it doesn't need to uh, turn a profit, it could, be, it could be something. I think there is a demand in town. There's a lot of families that are excited to come to our downtown and use it in different ways. But I'm just saying, like, there's a way to kind of give them some direction. But it, there, there has to be some unifying force pushing this forward. Um, I am happy that we are debating what's happening on the ground floor. Um, I do think that uh, we should ask questions about the number of units also, um, because that matters. Uh, but, um, you know, it's like, uh, I understand why we're just kind of all over the place. So, um, you know designing the building in real time is a challenge. Uh, so can I just 
I know I know how we got into this situation. This this actually is is I, I imagine that Andrew might agree with me, might not, but this is no way to design a building. Um, and what we have here is, and it's it's not serving the interest of uh, Andrew's client either to have to go through this process this way. And the way we got to this point, in my opinion, is that somebody decided somewhere along the way that we had to have as many housing units as we possibly could fit on this piece of property in four stories. And that's what we have. And Andrew's done a pretty good job of it um, using a, uh, you know, a sawtooth uh, configuration in order to get light to light narrow door to as many units as he could. And it was interesting, um, um, Jeff, when you the other day said that you had, it was one of the town board meetings, you said that in trying to take out the three units and, and find where you might put them back, that you couldn't find a place to put them and that you essentially take late Tetris all day long because these things lock in so tight that there's no way to move. There's no room to move anywhere on this site. And because that was, I think, that was the, the fundamental <laughs> criteria for this design, everything else is at the margins. Everything else is being considered after the fact. And that's why we have retail spaces. We're trying to figure out, well, that, that doesn't make sense for us. Why is it this way? Why is it that way? That's what we have the open spaces. We're still trying to figure out whether they make sense or not. These things were not designed in tandem the way they should be designed. The architect, I guess, didn't have the opportunity to consider these things. I don't know how we got here in that respect, but that's where we are. And there's, there's two things we can do here, I think. This design is so locked in because of the unit count that the spaces around it are pretty much determined what they are. Maybe you're going to make a little bit more retail here, a little bit less retail there. But because of the way the buildings overhang the, the, the sidewalk, uh, not the sidewalk, the public space, because of the, the sawtooth configuration, because of the courts, because of all these things are locked into place, there's really not that much room to move. And so in my opinion, and, and I'm supporting uh, what Eldad uh, was saying, we started at the wrong it, town's interest, we start at the wrong place. If we started by saying we have to have 45 units, many units as you can get on the property, then we <coughs> left out of the equation the things that we're talking about now, the things that we should, should be concerned Tom, about. Tom, did we ever say that we had to have 45 units? I I'm think. asking. No, no, no I think the developer no. wants to maximize that space. Listen, if the, if the developer wants to have three stories and X amount of units, great. If that works, I'm happy to listen. No, no, I, Look, I think no, I revisionist know. history does not help us. This is where we are. So I think we have I, to determine can, can I, can how I, we're going to how we're going to help to either move this project <laughs> forward or not. I'm telling you why you're in this position. I, and I'm and I'm, I'm not saying that I didn't say that that anybody told them. I can understand uh, Andrews and uh, Jeff's position. Developers, this is what they do. I get it. But we let it we let it go so far that now it's 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 a lot. And that's my concern is that we should have been in the very beginning said, well, wait a minute. What about these other considerations? What kind of a neighborhood do we want here? What kind of a street do we want to build? What kind of retail do we want to have here? Put those into the design program. Maybe you end up with 40 units. Maybe you end up with 35 units. I don't know, but we never tested that. And now we're sort of trying to figure out what to do about these things, presumably after the fact, but it's not after the fact. You guys haven't. Uh, I, 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 I want to hear from the ARB. Yeah, there, when there you're, done. When you're done, I, I want to hear from the ARB, yes. And now, now we're in a position where pretty soon it's going to be after the fact because there's this push to, to get the legislation passed and to put this into place. And I'm suggesting that maybe we ought to look at this again. Okay, ARB, what do you guys think? Well, there's no units on the ground floor, so I don't think the number of units has anything to do with the struggle to push a pole on the ground floor. It's an unusually shaped site, and that's really the constraints, and there's always a push and pull on the side. Parking is a necessary kind of evil in all residential projects, unless you were going to have less parking and have people park outside the building, which nobody, I think, wants to do, then you can create some reusable real estate for retail and, and other uses. But when you take the boundaries of the site and figure out how to put a park in, 
you're taking the leftover poche space to try to put to the best possible uses, it becomes this push and pull. It's, it's complicated. Right. And, uh, and, I, and I agree that, uh, you know, we want to set the retail up to succeed. I think Tom said that. I think that's that's a good principle to uh, to stick with. And I think this little zigzag that they made is, is really horrible and, and cruel for retail use. Um, I don't know if, Andrew, if you did any test fits for back of house, front of house of just a retail space or even a kitchen. A commercial kitchen takes up 30%, 40% of the area of a restaurant. And I don't see how that would fit in any of this uh, space, let alone where does the garbage go and, and where does the black iron duct go to, to, to exhaust out the roof. Um, so I think, I don't know if it works, if you and, and Greg in his email this morning uh, had sent some suggestions and I sort of agree with him that the massing of your, your space doesn't work. And can it work? I don't know. You're, you're the designer on this, so you can uh, see if it works. But I think, um, I think it'll be in the town's best interest to make, uh, you know, a, a large retail space that's deep enough that could work for one tenant or two tenants or even test fit a, a diner in there, which everybody seems to want to have, and I don't know if that would really fit. Even with an additional five, for example, at 570 square feet? It's just not deep enough. So I mean, deep. if you just, you yeah, know, back you know, the kitchen is in the back, everything is in the back, the, you know, does the seating well, work in that? Well, it depends on the size of the diner, too. Right. Well, true. It's got to be true. something that earns. It's got to be something that has to work. work. Yeah, it has to work, it has to earn. Yeah, money. I mean, Bobo's would work in there, but, you know, it's right. not So one of the things, though, that we also said was what we didn't want was a building that masses that entire site that doesn't have public space and is just basically from the sidewalk back. Right. One of the things I think that you liked and that I like, and I know other we've gotten other comments, is that because of this zigzag pattern, you have this open space that pushes it off of no, the and street. I'm not saying, I'm so it doesn't feel as dense as just a straight no, and I, you know, I, I, I wall. I still like that, but I think I think it's a matter of Moving the bike, moving the lobby, moving the utility, just you know, rejiggering what's there, and maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it does, but right now that shape doesn't work for retail. I'll, I'll just, I'd like I'll, to. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly just make a, a quick note. I think to the point about um, the, the configuration of retail space, because we we certainly share uh, the concerns about making it a viable retail space that can accommodate a variety of uses. You know, whether it's a diner or any a number of future tenants that might arise. One of the inherent challenges that we are facing right now is 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 simply a geometric one. In that, uh, there has been a significant amount of concern expressed about the the gross area of retail, um, and there has been you know we they don't want uh, certain members don't want to exceed um, a a threshold above which uh, parking would be unfeasible or would create a sufficient demands in town that could not be met. Uh, and then we all are also receiving requests to continue that activation along the street, primarily through retail. And so we're just stretching a finite area. Um, and we're, certainly there are ways we could revisit this if other, um, I'd say, concrete priorities were established that would allow us to spend the time necessary to um, produce a solution that meets the criteria that you're uh, outlining. So it sounds like rather than us sitting here and designing this building for them, we should give them concrete steps as to these are the three things we want to see and let them go design their building because we keep going, you know, they thought they were responding to the comments in this working group last week or two weeks ago, which they did. And now we're saying, well, now go back to the way it was before. And I think that it's probably very frustrating for them. So we need to decide, do we want retail there? Do we want residential? Do we want open space? Do we want a straight flat wall that just goes right to the lot line? So I think once we have those decisions, let's let them decide how a diner fits in there because they know we want that too. Jeff, did you have something you need to say? I just have a couple of comments. I'm exhausted. This is, we keep doing this. I think there's two different comments being made and I think everybody needs to be clear. Tom is saying residential, and you're saying residential is two different things. Tom, correct me if I'm wrong. When you're saying residential, you're saying residential as residential units coming down to street level, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, I that, mean, I saw from yes. the planning board meeting, Tom is referring to units having entrances on the street level. Yes. Correct. He's not talking about, uh, I want the, I think people are talking past each other in this meeting. He is talking about a building where residential units come to street level. When he's saying the red, that residential is at the street, he's not talking, and I don't mean to be he's talking. He's not talking about that. a lobby. No, he's not talking he's about talking a lobby or amenities. He's talking as though units. front doors. units have front doors and that side of is though street. it's not retail yeah. at all. It's that it's residential apartments at ground level, call them townhouses or call them. So it has no retail activation. It's just people walking to their front doors. So you want to redesign the building then to look like did kind redesign of Brooklyn. The building is that what you're week. saying? Well, like you, with stoops and I do I want to redesign this building? Mm -hmm. uh, no, <laughs> no, he did. That's not. I did not redesign your building. Somebody did. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff on the screen. It, it, it's, it's actually very difficult to redesign your building because, like you, it's a lock. You can't really make moves in it. I, I came. What I did do, and and I already said this a number of times, and in, in the planning board meetings. Yeah, here, here it is. So can I explain to what I did? I didn't redesign anybody's building. What I did was we had put. Just to be clear, it was a public meeting. There's no secrets. This isn't like a big. I don't. Meeting. People seem very surprised. That's why I'm just. Yeah, I, didn't I don't this. think anybody's I didn't surprised. See this. I don't I mean, understand why you're getting so upset. I thought that was a very helpful right. meeting. Right. Can, I, can, I just, can, can I just? Yeah, just asking Tom. the question, Tom. Go ahead. Yeah. Can I try yeah. and answer the question? Is that a long time ago the planning board looked at this under referral and we said that we think that there is a problem with the zoning text and the, the design mm -hmm. of the building. And what we did is we put together through a series of meetings some recommendations for the zoning text, text to change in order to meet certain principles of town planning and neighborhood design that we thought were important for North Greeley. Mm -hmm. Now, we can write all the text we want. We can send memos around to everybody. And it turns out, of course, that people have difficulty translating the text into what that would actually mean. So what I did, I took it upon myself with the agreement of the planning board to give an illustration of what that zoning text would be. It's a demonstration of zoning text. It's not that it's a redesign of, of just building. It's mm -hmm. not. It's a demonstration of an alternative zoning text and what that would deliver for a North Greeley neighborhood. So can I make, I want to make an observation and I have a, a question. Okay. So what I see here is this redesign, but I see retail space here and what you were describing, which is residential going down to the stoop level on the north side. Um, so my question is this. Uh, there's an example in Armonk of um, a development that's being proposed on the Mariani sites where the developer came to the town and they went back multiple times and did redesigns of their project. So what we have here is a, is a very different situation. And my experience of this from the beginning is that we were presented with a, a set design that it didn't seem that there was any flexibility to kind of collaborate and work through the elements that we wanted and what the building might look like. I mean, understanding that this is private property, I get that. But um, but the the owner and developer are asking for a special permit. You know, so I don't know, we're talking about things that we want to see, we want to activate the downtown, but yet we're kind of stuck with a certain design. And I guess I want to know what is the flexibility to sort of change things around to get to get what we want, and why is it that we're really just stuck with only one design? So, Vicky, I, I think one of the things that is a significant difference from that property you're talking about in Armagh is this borders a train track. And no, I, I understand wait, I know all I of that. I, I'm just this talking is conceptually. A, this is a very I, I distinct, I know, but I'm going to yeah. finish speaking anyway. This is a very distinct property, and I think the last thing 
I want is something that's going to have apartments. They could totally redesign it according to how we want and have apartments all along the train track with windows that don't open and everything else. To me, this that, is that's actually, not what I'm talking I'm about still at all. Finish. This is actually an ingenious design to deal with the confines of the property. And I think, given that they've been here for a year, whether or not you chimed in or any of us chimed in before i think that they've actually gone beyond to try to incorporate what we're telling them the problem is we keep telling them a different thing from week to week and we just said get rid of this and activate more space i mean i don't think anyone with children or anyone i would never move into a ground floor apartment in the chappaqua hamlet ever but um I think people are going to feel like it's it may not be safe. Kids run outside. I I I wouldn't do that. But and it's not a brownstone. This this design is not that. You have apartments on the back of the train track on this no, with windows that don't open. Yes, you do because you presented to, this to us sorry, at the planning no, at I, the I, I session last time. Yeah, there there so are no windows in the back. It it or. So to me, this is an ingenious way to do this. And we can just tell the developer right now, you know what? We, we don't want this. See, uh, put in whatever retail you want there and walk away and just rent out what's there and we're good. But I think that everyone has the ability, if you wanted to redo your house, you would come to the architectural review board with a plan as to this is what I wanna do. You're not gonna go to them and say, tell me how I should design this. You're gonna say, this is what I wanna do. And they're gonna say, well, we'd like you to change this a little bit and this a little bit. And then they're gonna give you approval to build what you want to build. It's the okay. same, that's the way it works. Something. Yeah. But what's different about this is that it's in the center of the town and we're granting a developer a special permit. Agreed. So what's very important to me, and it's unfortunate that it's taken this long to get us all together to be talking about these things to the detriment of the applicant, that's unfortunate. Can't do anything about that now. But here we are. It has to work for the community too. It can't just be the developer driving what we do, how we do it, when we do it. So. It's going to take multiple iterations to get there. And that's just kind of how, I, where we are right now is there is give and take. We're all sitting here, we're throwing ideas. Some things are gonna stick, some things aren't going to stick. What seems to be a priority for the majority of the people here though, is activating that corridor, activating North Greeley, giving people a reason to be there other than they live there. Setting up the retail space for success. I don't know. I, I, I don't think care. they have we to be willing to, to work with us. I it's think they more. are. I think we just need to tell them what we want. And well, we keep changing well, we're, our no, minds. We're not changing we're not, it. We're working we through are. it. We have a, people here that have years and years and years of expertise. I'm very interested in hearing what they have to say. I want to work with them. I want the best possible outcome. And we're just talking. There's no reason to get yes, no, but I'm like the and ARB, that includes the developer I'd like too. them to be, it can't, it's care. not just one person's opinion. I don't care whether he has 5,500 square feet of retail or 4,200 square feet of retail. It means absolutely nothing to me. What I care is that 30 square feet, 30 feet deep of retail will not work. Right. So you could have 5,500 square feet of retail at one square foot per around all over. Obviously, that's an exaggeration. It ain't going to work. So we're, we're telling we want more and more and more. That's garbage and nonsense if it's not going to work. Right. It's yes, really simple. Exactly. It's really right. simple. So, so the concept is there. The principle is there. And I rely on, among others, the four of you who know a heck of a lot more than me in this area to say this is this can work or it can't work. And Tom, it may not be perfect and it may not work what you want, but I think we also have to compromise because if we keep on going at this just in a general concept, whether it was a form-based code before, whether it's you know, lot by lot, we ain't gonna go anywhere. We're gonna get squat and we're gonna find ourselves in the same place in 10 years saying woulda, coulda, shoulda. Well, I, um, I'm not going to respond to that. Um, that wasn't an attack on you or anybody. No, 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 I understand that. that. No, I, I, I appreciate that. I understand that. And let me just say that it's not important for me to agree to any of this, right? And I'm just one person at the table. But your input is as, as important as anyone I, else's. I appreciate that, and, and thank you for that. And But I'm not likely to change my mind on this. I mean, I've looked at this for since the first time it was sent over to us, and I think I understand it pretty well. And so I'm not likely to change my mind. I support 
if people think that retail will work, I mean, that's fine with me. I think that there's some risk there, but I think everybody agrees, including um, Andrew and Mr. Davis, that it's got to be the right proportion of dimension. Yeah, Otherwise, right. we're right. all up the creek, right. mm -hmm. and we don't want that to Can happen. Let me show you something. Well, the, the top, so, so, so there might be a challenge in getting that done here, but that's their job. Right. And so I, I agree that maybe we don't need to talk about retail anymore, except that we just need to be sure that if we're going to have a diner, it's got to work. Right. We went through we went through a process where we had um, we had Felix coming back to us at Chapco Crossing because we had located the trash bins for the restaurants inside the building. And they, he said, I can't lease restaurant space. It has to be outside the building so we made special provisions for them to put we need to find we need to be sure that those sorts of things are taken care of i don't know where the fume hoods go out of that kitchen do they go up through the apartments in this scheme so, I, so I one thing it. this so, is also not site plan approval right mm -hmm. all of those things where's the <clears throat> vent gonna go where's the garbage gonna go that all but assuming it's gonna work but that assumes it's gonna work yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, about, it's about the it's about the process <laughs> working yeah. it's yeah. about just, the design working of right. that, course so that's but this isn't the final design but we're looking at legislation is talking about it in the context Except in the in the context of whether this is going to work. Oh, I agree, and so that's why we probably point. should swap the utility back to Lisa, where it was before. The reason I mention those things is not because we're doing site plan review. The reason I mention those things is so that the next time we get together, those things are understood and taken care of, so we're not having that conversation again. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I bring it up. Could I, could, could I say? Could I? Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You first. So I just, I mean, I I generally heard agreement around here that. Everybody wants to see retail that can succeed. I feel like that's a principle that we can agree on and leave it in the, the hands of the person who has to make that retail work um, in, and the architect to make it fit in there. Mm -hmm. We've made it clear that a diner is what's our, on our wish list. Food and beverage. I mean, the... To me, I feel like we can set out that principle and trust that the experts will come back with a proposal that meets that. And if it, if they can't meet it, they'll tell us that. Let me show you. Well, We're here is working. Let us show you for a minute. Before we see another we... iteration of bike space and retail yeah. configuration. <laughs> Can we go back to where we started yes, an hour which was, ago, which is legislation? Which legislation and trying to just get at the concepts. One second. Just get at the concepts we want. So we want, obviously, retail space that's going to work. We wanted public space. We wanted to activate that street. So with those things in mind, I think... And we wanted apartments that had air and flow so people would also want to live there because the last thing we want is a vacant apartment building that nobody wants to move into. So I think those are the things that we all agree to. And that's what needs to be in the legislation and let them figure out how they're going to make those concepts work. But yeah, do you want to say one so quick thing? What we did was while we're sitting here, <laughs> Sim and I calling and texting back and forth is we have a lot of bike spaces. We've talked about this before. There's something like 60 or 70 in those two bike areas. We originally had retail. We we had more retail than this. And over the conversations over time, we scaled it back because parking became the issue with the retail. So right now, where Andrew drew where the yellow bike room is, Andrew, if you can shade in that bike room, that will become retail. So that kind of call it area here will become retail. That whole section will become retail. We can bulk in the utility room that is in gray and make that retail. That can be your retail block there. Yeah. Where's the utility well, go? Yeah, where's the Where utility? the former bike room was can become the utility room. Right? Where's that? That is where <laughs> this 13 <laughs> foot space that we keep oh, talking right. about. Oh, okay. right? oh, that. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you. Right? Thank you. That Thank space. You can become the utility room. Mm -hmm. We can leave Stacey open space in front of it. Right. And keep the public court. But you're always going to have that line that's there. There's you know, going to be a trade-off, right? right? There's always so, trade-offs. Right. But here you have something that really we, works. That can be and glass. Can, 
yeah, that, that, can, slash, that, that can have yeah. a couple feet that we can have a rotating yeah. art. Yeah. Right? right, it, it can make have it a window deep. like a store window where it you could can be put storefront glass gallery. that's a couple feet deep with community art being displayed in it so it's not blank, mm -hmm. right? And we're, we're talking here, we're all working together, but that could be something that could be glass storefront with open space in front of it that's hiding a utility space behind it. And now we're, we've made the retail more usable. We have open space in front of the retail. And now we've taken that utility space and hidden it but behind you, something that's a display for the community. Where you just drew that red line that says public court 570 square feet. You're not proposing no. losing that no, public court. No, we'll keep court. the public no, no, court. See, it oh, disappeared yeah, already. There you go. <laughs> so we just need to say it out loud. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's magic. So, and, and, well, and it's not magic because why, if that's just going to be a blank wall again, no, it's not, is what I'm saying. You can make well, it like a department store showcase. It can be like a department store window yeah. with art gallery yeah. and stuff. I, gee, I'd love to be able to finish a sentence. Go ahead. If it's going to be an art gallery, uh, I don't even know what that means. I mean, I raise kids too, and I understand, you know, the, 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 the painting on the refrigerator. I get that. <laughs> this is not, th th that kind of art and that kind of community involvement, I don't think, is enough to drive the active space that we're talking about. I think we're we're picking from the sky and, and making wishes here about how this is actually going to work. So I think that we're back to the same condition we had before, which was essentially a blank wall. And in before it was a, a, a bike storage rack, but uh, now it's a utility room with some glass in front of it for some art. Look, we talked so about commissioning this, this, murals too. We yeah. can put a mural should, should there. Should we steer back to the, to what okay. we're, should we steer back? I can't. Please. Legislation. I can't. I can't. We can't, we're not going to design the site plan with the legislation. So right. I, picking up on a couple of comments that I heard, um, the legislation can set priorities. Um, it can it can can define characteristics and qualities that we want to see. It can say what we don't want to see. Uh, if, if we don't want re, uh, residential on the first floor, we can stipulate that in the in legislation. But I can't in legislation say where the bike room is going to be. It just doesn't work that right. way. So we can talk about uh, amount of space, the amount of retail space we'd like to see. Um, we like to, you know, activate the, the street. Yeah, the depth. Uh, but what's going to happen ultimately is they're going to come back in for the special permit, and they're going to say, "Oh, event has to go." It turns out we have to make some changes because when we drill, this this happens. This always happens. Mm -hmm. You well, know, Ed, we have some questions here because how would how are we to know? how much square footage of retail space, for instance, we want in this legislation without understanding how that's going to work. I think the concept plan- We don't plan, have the expertise here on the town board to do that. I, I think between the concept plan and the input that you're getting through these joint meetings, I think you could set some general parameters. Well, we're in trying terms to get the, input, but that input keeps getting interrupted. I feel like we're not coming to any closure with the input, and yet we want to work on the legislation, which we do, but I feel we don't have enough information because this legislation is so specific. What information do you feel like you need? Well, for instance, we would, as, as Ed said, we would be putting in the square footage on the retail. At least. How are we going to do that without better understanding what these people are saying? Well, I, I, we we're going to pick a number. You know. I, I'd suggest that you don't have to hit a bullseye on the first throw, all right? I, I think you could set some general parameters in terms of the amount of retail space you'd like to see. You can put a minimum, too. Yeah, a, a, a minimum. And again, already baked into the legislation, the way it's drafted now, is some flexibility. So if the applicant has to come back and ask for some relief, they can do that. My concern, though, is we give the legislation, and then we get this, right? We, we do the whole thing. And then you have three architects who are like, this isn't going to work for a diner. So now we've, what's their incentive to then make the changes after we've already given them the legislation that they want to build the building that they want? That's my concern. So you guys are in a luxurious position where the developer, you're a participant now in the site plan approval. You could marry the legislation and the site plan approval. But we're not doing that. And get what you want. But we're not doing if, that. If you do legislation, you know, I'm, if the site got sold, the developer got unfriendly, he could come up with a design and say, no, I qualify with all exactly. this stuff and you don't like it and you could get sued and you'd lose because he would qualify. 
So why wouldn't you marry them together and well, work with the Some developer? of us want to do that, but I, I guess some um, we're hearing that we're not doing site planning now. We're just going to do the legislation. That's so what we it's, all it's very agreed circular. to at the beginning. It's very circular. The entire board unanimously okay. agreed That's not to do site plan. But I agree <laughs> you that what you don't want that is the town to say, happy we do, we, what we don't want is to put legislation in and then get something that fits the legislation, but isn't what we want. But right? is my concern the not legitimate? Have no, no, it is legitimate. So what we're trying to do, That's what I asked Ed is, is there a way that we can sort of get into the legislation, what we're generally looking for, where there's there's no windows against the back. It's not a straight wall. It's getting us, you know, how can we make it specific enough that we know what we're going to get once the legislation's approved if we're not at but site plan? But that seems like it should be site plan, which is why it should be together. You can get a very pedestrian design that could check all the boxes of the mm -hmm. legislation and you wouldn't be happy and right. you'd lose in a fight because it would comply with the legislation. Right. It, it was together initially. The applicant decided to separate them. But we can't you could uh, change it back, can't you? Well, I, I suppose we could require that. At uh, the last meeting, the developer, I, I thought on the words came out, offered to do that, saying that's what he wanted all along. I think the applicants decided to hedge its bets, frankly, because it doesn't know what, if anything, it's going to get by way of legislation. But we keep going back to this. We keep going back to the site plan and the legislation should be married together. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, this it's, is because, what I it's because we're need. zoning for a building instead of having zoned for, for the community. And and it, it was backwards. This is, I don't mean to be revisionist, but I'm explaining why we're in this situation. Yeah, Which and I'm one building, late to the court. party. Holly's late yeah. to the party, right? So I no, understand. No. You're this doing was a whole north really yeah. be a different story. Presented to the one before specific we got site. Here, so. so why not package it together and get what you want? So look, I understand that the reason why it got taken out was because they said if we know you're not going to approve this we don't want to spend all the money to do the site plan approval sure. so which makes sense right why make them spend another hundred thousand dollars if we're going to just say no so if i think if they can get comfortable if the developer can get comfortable that we're okay generally as long as these kind of guidelines are met we're okay with a building like this in this site then maybe he, you know, we can try to marry them a little more. But I understand them not wanting to spend that money if we're we can't even agree how much, you know, if, if we want. But the most, but that's but because the most we don't have a site plan. That's why. The most why. expensive well, part. Assume of, this is your site plan, at least to some extent. And can't, why can't we attach it as an exhibit? I don't. Understand. Lisa, the most expensive part of a developer doing site plan approval is usually the civil engineering design. Right. Which I don't think it, the. the you're as concerned with as you are of the architecture on the what it looks like, the visual stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not so expensive and for the them feasibility. to. It's not so expensive. I'm not the words you mouth, but to be tweaking some of these designs on the ground floor plane and some of the renderings, which I'm sure they've been 3D modeling that they can twist around and move. That's not so expensive when you're redoing all your civil engineering plans and everything else. It gets very expensive, but that could, in a sense, wait until the design was nailed down. So can't we attach like not not necessarily site plan like the vent has to go here because it may be as they're doing something a vent has to go somewhere else but ed why can't we attach like a picture of what what it's gonna it needs to look substantially like this can, can i approval. ask a question about site plan i don't know if it is either. site plan approval because if we do this and is it not true maybe i'm wrong about this that Every discussion that's, being, that's happening right now about where the red is on that drawing could legitimately happen in the site plan approval process, that there are no rights of where that red goes. Uh, let me finish. The applicant has no specific rights about where that red goes. The site plan approval can't modify in the zoning text we put in place. That discussion is more appropriately held in the context of the site plan review. Thank you. And, and, the, the, and the site plan review authority would have the opportunity and the authority to say, no, really, this doesn't work in yep. this way. Yep. So if the applicant, quite wisely, I think, decides that, gee, he'd like to separate these two things, um, I would say just, just get on with that and then deal with these things later on. I think there needs to be some confidence that we get the feeling that this is going to work, but we don't need to know exactly what the lines are at this point. 
Exactly. Well, that's where we're going totally to move that's the things around. We said it right. Right. I don't agree with it, but that's right. Right. the process I agree with. The design, I don't. That's okay. I also just want to throw out um, the the thought of why legislation matters. Um, just a, you know, Ali, when you said someone said diner and you said food and beverage, it like you know a light bulb went off in my head that you know we can't guarantee a diner is no, going to come. No, we can't. Of course. Of course. Uh, and so oftentimes in legislation, a lot of towns have um, language that addresses chain restaurants. And, you know, we could spend hours designing a perfect restaurant space and then it could be, a, you know, a chain restaurant that's not of interest uh, to people in this town. It's not the diner that we're thinking of, but it's more like a Roy, a Roy Rogers or something. So, Orbeez? Orbeez? <laughs> Jack in the Box? Yes. <laughs> Um, Carl, so we, Carl, Carl Jr. Are we allowed to Carl, specifically Carl put in yeah. legislation no chain restaurants? I've asked this question. Before. Yeah, and I've given the answer before. So I'd, I'd rather. Uh, <laughs> right now, the legislation uh, reads any uh, uh, use permitted in the BRP district. So mm -hmm. there's no guarantee uh, that you get anything other than a permitted use. Now, can you not right limit now. the food? Now, now, right now, but. But yeah, um, it's, it's something again. Beverage. It's about the values and what we're we interested could, in our fine. town. You could be just Chains we could limit it to food and beverage, beverage, but I think you can't say no chain stores. But there's a way you could work around it, right? You say like, can not, you say no restaurants that exist within a certain radius, the same restaurant? I think there are certain things you can do because I know they've done that with My other point is, stores. I, I, I don't want to stations. debate that issue right now. By the way, ta there's plenty of towns across this country that, that have, that have dealt you. with this issue, and there there is there is precedent out there. My point is. Legislation matters. Our priorities matter. There's a way to put forward what's interesting to us, and then let them design their building. So maybe we should go through the legislation. I, so I didn't know. That, by the way, there's new like there's new language. I mean, that's not something that have we seen that? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 It's, it's yes. Been so that's For kind of where we started, bringing this back to the very beginning, where no, we should talk like about the legislation and see what's important to okay. us Did to have in here. Eldad, I do have some last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah things I'd like to get on the table. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Would the board, though, before we leave this yes. discussion about design, would the board be comfortable if Sabrina and I worked on some language that, for you to look at that tried to put some of these ideas into words? That, you know, again, the priorities, the characteristics that you want to see, what you do and you sure. don't. Yes, I but like I would that. not mark up the legislation. Like, I think that's something that I don't want. I think it should be on the, the side. Legend. And we can then talk about it. That if we it would be a red line. It would be a red line copy, and we'd have the old copy. Yeah, you, you, do, you. We would write it to include it in the legislation because it's proposed as part of your legislation. No, I mean that's fine. I just don't want it presented like, with all due respect, like it was last time. Like this is what you agreed to when we hadn't seen any of these changes and actually didn't agree to a lot of we them. We can break it off and give it to you. That's what I'm thinking. So. Are you talking about what the retail could be right now? No, no, no. we're talking about the legislation. <laughs> May I say something about the list here? Um, May I say something? In the work session, in not in well, this. Well, I mean, the developer okay. is speaking a lot, and I'd like to say. Yeah, something. but we're not. This is a working group I session. That. We can absolutely do it in the public hearing, which is next. I promise. Well, you'll have plenty of opportunity to do that. I just want to point out that but, Lisa, you said uh, you have to go to it before the ARB for home renovations. The ARB looks at the neighborhood, and I haven't heard the mention from the ARB of how this fits in the neighborhood the All right, entire this time. Is for public well, I comment. understand that, Thank but you, Maggie, you know, this is not the time I understand for this. That, but I residents are being kept Maggie, on the outside. Maggie, it's still not the time. I'm not. We are not keeping residents. That's why we yes, were on are. our fourth public hearing you have tonight, a developer coming which is in what we're going to have, comments and he will be here at the public. Hearing, well, we, can't, we don't generally we can't make have a residents in this speak discussion at our public that's form it, formatting, okay. um, formulating so the legislation. What? Bikes and scooters. Yeah, so let's go to e bikes and scooters. Number that's five. your call, Lisa, but that's not right. <laughs> that's actually service. where my no, that I have a comment on that. Oh, okay, I, in fact, yeah. if I, I noticed that we're saying that they can't store them in their apartments, but we don't have anything that says that they're required to provide charging facilities for the e-bikes and scooters in the storage area. Um, I think that we need to make sure that that's considered. Otherwise, they can't charge them anywhere and the batteries are going to end up in the apartments. Was it yeah, not in the right. recent draft? No. That may for, be another. For cars. 
not for Oh, yes, that's right. That may be another Art. detail that we pick up in um, special site plan review as opposed to in legislation, but we'll definitely take a look at okay. whether it has a place here. All right, so and I think we also want to say, which I'm sure is in there, that obviously any e-bike, given that these things aren't necessarily so safe, that it's in an area that is fire resistant, at least the ceiling, so that if something did catch on fire, we would make sure it's not going to spread to the rest of the building. Self-contained area readily accessible in the event of an emergency. Yeah, there you go. And we're putting the car share back. Let's yeah. go. Do you want to get to that? There's another one yes. that we get to first. Is the fire code stuff already being in the fire code? Fire yeah, I mean, I think it's downstream. Yeah. Um, okay. Early service is on page four. Yeah, I have. That's something that I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, we have in here that the maximum permitted impervious coverage should be 85%. That's pretty close to what it is currently, and they're proposing something like 63 or 64%. I think we should lower that um, to 70, 65, something, but lower something than- less than what it is now. Significantly le less if, you know, especially given that's what's in the plan and that should help with ensuring that the courtyards and the green yep. room are maintained. Yep. Can I, uh, just a word of caution here, because I, I don't know if this, but um, has, Bob's the only looked at this because I think they're counting on using those, those uh, what are they calling public courts, but the, maybe they aren't, but the private courtyards. Right. Does that qualify for uh, a previous surface? I don't think he's looked at it for that question. Well, I think it's, a, it's yeah. significant because I don't think it qualifies. Because it's so the okay, so their calculation is, doesn't is, align with the way we'd calculate it. Uh, so yes, I think that's right. There's two different aspects. There's impervious coverage in regards to development coverage, and then there's the amount of, de of coverage that relates to stormwater requirements. Right. So, so what, what, this this, so what this, is this one referring this to? This impervious coverage is saying that, for example, you cannot cover the lot 100% with impervious material. You can only go up to 85% of coverage. It's a question as to whether or not the area on the roofs that are proposed it's as gardens. No, no, if those gardens count as impervious coverage or not. If yeah. they do, I want. I think it should be lower. If they don't, then. Oh, can we just say we got it? We got it. So can, can we, we just talk to Bob? I guess we have to understand well, how the applicant is well, counting yeah, yeah. their impervious how, coverage because right. they are saying there's. He can answer. He raised his hand. Oh, Andrew. Oh. Andrew. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, we discussed this with, with Bob um, previously. New York State DC has specific regulations regarding what can count as a pervious surface regarding stormwater management. Uh, they have specific standards that must be met for, in this case, a, a planted raised structure, such as the, the courtyards um, above uh, that the residents would access. Uh, and so there are um, state approved metrics that we would need to meet in order for those to count as pervious for uh, stormwater management. I think there's the secondary question, which uh, I believe Sabrina may have been alluding to, which is that the, the actual materiality itself, um, you know, whether it's, an, uh, let's say, an EPDM roof or it's a green roof, um, the surface could be characterized as a, as a particular, meeting a particular requirement. Um, currently, there is no language differentiating or uh, I would say specifying how to make that calculation, but the uh, as we've shown in our our previous, uh, I'll, I'll go quickly to this. Um, uh, the the ratios that we are achieving in terms of that uh, uh, existing versus proposed impervious sixty three point five percent that requires those elevated courtyards, not the green roofs, but the elevated courtyards to contribute to um, a pervious surface, which means they are built as um, stormwater mitigating intensive surfaces rather than a, uh, an extensive green roof, which we've previously proposed for the, the bulk of the level four roof. So I think what he just said is that we could lower that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but the lower ratio is in your spec. So can I, can I just clarify that you are saying that your proposed ratio is 63.5 because that's what's in the chart. Yeah, that's correct. And that, that's with the, with the caveat that we are utilizing 
the building, part of the building to store uh, that rainwater um, in the storm event. Uh, and so meeting the DEC's regulations of what is characterized as a pervious surface. Now that's that's the state DEC regulations. Newcastle does not have that language reflected in their zoning code currently. So we are we are providing means by which you could specify this in your legislation. Right, so the legislation could specify 63, 63.5 and you'd, you'd be okay with that. It's more just because that's in your specs. Currently, I mean, that's yeah. that's based on the current plan, uh, which might change based on this discussion. Right. So, I can tell the legislation to answer that. Those can I make a, a recommendation here? It is what it is in the time. They're going to figure that out. And uh, I'm guessing that's going to be the number that we would accept because if we require something less than that, they're going to have to change the design. And we're not going to make them do that. We're pretty clear. So if, if you want to make it something which is more than what they're doing, then that's fine too. I just want it. I just want it lower than what it is today. <laughs> it, this gives them too much headroom. We'd like to bring it exactly. closer to what is achievable, and we, I think we may even unpack this language to require them to meet these DEC regulations. I would guess they're going to meet them anyway, but that's fine. Well, they, they, the, 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 yes, but to get to the number that we peg here, whether it's sixty-five or seventy-five, that's going to be, it'll be less than eighty-five. And in the, in, but in the spirit of somebody else could potentially be taking this special permit, if you know, the developers yeah. leaves okay. or they sell. I, I want to make sure we memorialize the fact that this is a benefit Fair to enough. the environment. Okay. Want to lead on that? Sure. <laughs> the numbers, IT okay. numbers. So um, the, the parking, this discussion on parking right now as it's reflected in this version of the draft is one space for each apartment with 2.8 spaces for retail per thousand and 10 spaces per thousand for square foot. This was a discussion that we had over in the community center that the planning board had recommended, why are you messing around? Just make it one space because of the TOD and whatnot. The ITE standard is a little bit more than one space as we had previously discussed. Um, per bedroom, 1.1 for a one bedroom and 1.4 for a two bedroom. The question is whether or not that's going back because it is an IT recommendation. And if you recall in earlier discussions, the town board was going to go with what ITE said and then they were going to require the car share. The planning board was of the opinion that the car share should not be legislated. I think the town board members felt that it, it should be legislated because the applicant offered to do it. Um, so we need a decision as to which way this section of the legislation should fall. Can I just... As it's written right now, it's written based on your communal discussion at your last meeting, which was one space, no car share. So can I just try... Even and... though he was going to provide it anyway. Uh, I think clarify what the planning board was trying to say, and, and your dad will catch me if I'm wrong about this. It wasn't that we were against car sharing. It was that we didn't want the car share... Um, um, provision to take away from the basic number of spaces per residential unit. And the original proposal, I think, was 0.85 per residential unit because car sharing was going to be there. Mm -hmm. For studio. It was, that was for studio. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so I got that wrong. But we weren't against car sharing. We just wanted to be sure that there was a minimum number of Yeah, I didn't say units. that you were against mm -hmm. car sharing okay. at all. I, I would like below personal... the ITE. At one because of the car share. Car, yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's why it was in the legislation. So yeah. I, I think ITE has I think a provision for car share in it, right? No, it does not. Oh, they don't. It does not. Okay. But mm -hmm. we wanted some sort of alternative. Yeah, so what's the baseline? Don't then? they have guidelines, informal guidelines regarding car share? No, they, at this point, they do not. So what would be the effective per, per unit? 1.1 for a one bedroom and 1.4 for a two bedroom. Does I that think... include the car share provision? No. Okay, so if the car share provision is in there, what would that render? It would render one space per unit. Okay. I think we definitely want the car share in there. I agree. Requirement. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, if they're willing to put it in. So, so we have to make those changes back? Yes. And add the car share back. I, yeah, yeah. I, I think, think that was a we, misunderstanding. I don't think yeah, so. the town board ever took that out. Yeah, I mean, I like the car share because it, 
I think it makes somebody less likely to want a second car if, if they're living there. And so I think that that's a good way to um, help drive the effect that we want, which is probably fewer cars being owned by mm -hmm. those residents. Right. That's why the ratio yeah. can be lower. Yeah. 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 I think the car share um, pushes us in that direction. Without it, right. that's it's, want it. yeah. it's a to have fingers it crossed. Right. Yep. OK, next. Uh, parking in lieu, I can touch on that. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's talk about that. All right, so we know that uh, the retail slash restaurant can't be parked on site. It's going to have to be off site. And the, we're waiting on a, uh, a study. You're going to come back with some more data on available parking in the downtown. Yeah, we don't have that yet. Finished, just waiting on but the point is that there's going to be some parking consumption um, with respect to the retail slash restaurant use, and that has a cost associated with it. Uh, parking spaces on the street have to be, uh, snow has to be shoveled, spots have to be, uh, parking has to be enforced. You're talking about over by um, the train striping. station, the striping, the sweeping, I mean, it's not mm -hmm. free. So the idea is that it'd be a, a fee, that, that just like if they were in the parking district, they would pay, would pay into the parking district to help offset what they're consuming. So I don't mind giving them an option, either paying in lieu of, you know, in lieu of parking or that building has to pay into the parking district. Either one works. Well, same, actually. actually the, 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 the idea, the idea is to come it. up with a fee based on consumption. What, you know, what's the cost of providing those spaces that this particular project's going to need? Well, and then the having current, that fee paid into the parking district. What are the current restaurants and retail that are in the parking district pay? It's um, it's it's mixed. It's mixed. It's it's yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's mixed, and this is an opportunity to, to try and create a formula that's based on a known formula, a uniform fee basis. Um, that we're I'm getting information from our transportation consultant as to how it's used elsewhere to see if it makes sense here. So is this, is this contingent on this parking study to make sure that the parking is actually available? I think it'll inform. Uh, what we, we'll know better what the um, supply is, and when we land on this on the retail um, footprint, we'll know so better what the consumption is. assuming that's going to work is. out, but we need to... The applicant has provided, I guess, some preliminary information, and they're revising their traffic and parking study to provide more data for us to assess. And the, the data is not just for the site, but also the background parking demand in the, in the, in the hamlet, uh, yeah, or not? I, I, there, yeah, no, the it's initial, everything. Yeah. The initial was everything. Right. Well, maybe we have a different interpretation of background. I'm suggesting that um, for the future demand in the hamlet. I don't think it's forward No, looking. we don't no. have this. You don't have those demand. numbers? No. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you're supposed to anticipate what future. You do planning. It's called planning. It'd be easier if we were reasonable. I, I mean, we did a lot of planning and those studies in connection with the form based code with thousands of units. So I'm, I'm as long as we're understanding it now, I mean, right now we have a lot of empty spaces. There's, there's, another, there's another issue out there, which is um, there are. There are properties here on the other side of North Greeley that really have some parking constraints because of the configuration of the sites. And if they are going to develop in the, in the kind of density that maybe we want to see here to solve our housing um, uh, obligations, they're going to need parking. And they're going to need off-site parking, I think. And I'm just concerned that we have a good idea of what that might be before it gets all gobbled up by one particular project and then they're left in a difficult position but right now those are all or not all but a lot of them are a tenth of an acre correct i, so, think, I think it's more of a future well, what does that well, have to that, do well because because if it's a density like this you're assuming that they're all putting selling their properties to one person to garner a one acre site i didn't so, say that I know I'm saying it is that but the you amount said I was saying it. is that the amount of development I think on those tenths of an acre I don't think can be contemplated right now they're privately owned and the the size of a residential unit to put on tenth of an acre is not that large 
Okay, I use the word planning, but I guess it doesn't. The, I mean, the point Compute. is you do you do zoning, no, and, and someone someone just, purchase, purchases purchases no, a number of lots that, based that, on the zoning. You're telling me no, that no, I know no. What I'm, what I'm saying about. is I'm telling, that I know if it's saying. an acre, is if it's a tenth of an acre site, the size of an apart of a building you can put on it is not that great. Do you know? Do you know? You know how towns get built. Do you know how these things happen? Right? It's not one tenth of an acre at a time. Yes. People come in and they assemble property and they build. That's the way cities I, are built. I understand, that's and that's so what's going to I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a statement here, so please don't be obnoxious. Governor. Like that. So these are these are the kinds of things that this is the way things are built and towns are built. And to suggest that those pieces of property are going to remain in that condition is just not a reasonable thing I, to say. I didn't make that suggestion well, I thought you did. No, I, didn't. I don't know what you're saying all right so ed we're, we're, we don't want to get too sidetracked energy so. efficiency standards ready for that one yes please wait, so, wait, wait did we so you're getting back to us on what we've that, tasked the, the parking and uh sure, so traffic we're... consultants with coming up with a, a methodology a formula for a uniform fee that we'll share with you when yeah we i mean i think that's fair because we don't require any of our other merchants to because some they, of them get taxed. Yeah, no, 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 also, no. I'm sorry. Also, to provide the, the parking for their, they, their they traded business. Their, so they traded they traded and land pay. to exactly. enter in. But we're so, also giving this developer. No, benefit. no. So it makes sense to me to require okay. some kind of payment I, in lieu of parking. I just think overall, whatever we come up with with the parking based on the traffic study is going to be a short term decision because there will be future development. We also have the opportunity I, I to think look that at was the train point. station lot. We're going to be looking mm -hmm. at the train right, station. I think we need to take a next step and look at parking holistically in in the hamlet. Um, that was kind of done. Not. It was. <coughs> it was done was in, in connection with the form based code, not with this project. Um, it was not. It was. It was. It was not done in relation to the form based code other than the policy was to have no net loss of parking, which meant there were parking garages on any area in the train station that was currently parked. So you started on the second floor. I think this is apples and oranges. The form yeah, based code yeah. Is something completely yeah, and I think I'm, so. I'm and I think I'm talking about something different. Yeah, you are. Is, yeah. I mean, right now, I it's think we should step. focus on what's before us. Yep. I have a question when you say that retailers or buildings donated to the parking district. Yes. Did they donate space for parking or just donated? Donated any unused land. Permanent easement. For parking for only parking. or just in general? Permanent for easement for, for parking. parking. For parking only. Because <laughs> okay. we have public space that could in theory be donated to the community as public space in perpetuity to the town. For parking? No, so just parking. We're saying the open no, space. No, it's for parking. For parking. It wasn't just. Oh, okay. That's why I was asking the question whether it was parking or open space. Got, no, yeah, we have easement for parking. For parking. Specifically. All right, so energy. Um, the changes that you see in energy are really to get at ensuring that we do. Uh, wait, 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 before we're we're actually we missed one thing before you got to that was the, the number ten. That EV charging has to be separated from petroleum fueled vehicles by a fireproof wall. And this, oh, we were talking about this. Yeah, we. The fire. That's yeah. what we yeah. thought. Yeah. You thought this was something yeah. from special. somebody else. Was yeah. this, was this, this the standard from the, from the fire chief? Right. And, yeah. and he's in the process of finalizing a letter to you all. There was an email that was circulated to you. And our discussions that is one comment that he had had. That if you, you know, the ideal situation would be to separate it, if not to ensure you had sprinkler systems over the hood and the trunk. Oh, that was I an think either or? I thought it was it both. No, it, or, right? Well, let, let's put it this way. I, in the conversations, it was the best situation is to separate them and then to have the suppression systems over both over the entire parking My space. My personal view is I don't think it's feasible to have a wall like that, but I think 100% we need to comply with the fire code with the sprinkler systems, all of that. Andrew spoke to Bob. Yeah, so. Sorry. Andrew. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just quickly weigh in. So so Tom and I had, a, uh, Tom DePole and I had a chance to discuss this. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, the language as written is technically infeasible. I, I, I genuinely don't understand how to build what was written. Uh, the there is a 
very specific uh, set of uh, uh, regulations that the National Fire uh, Protection uh, Association has developed in regards to EV charging. And so uh, we've made their recommendation previously is um, where possible to reference technical standards that are developed at a national level, whether it's a UL listing or NFPA regulations um, that address particular concerns with uh, you know, fire immersion technologies um, rather than attempt to write a, uh, a, a technical specification in a zoning document. It doesn't, yeah, it, does it, it seems unusual. Yeah, I agree. Take it. For the sake of saving time, these are simple, these are simple things. Yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. else, yeah. we don't need to read yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, energy okay. standard. Is this another thing that? Yeah, this is something just to make sure that it's spelled out that they have to do two type of testing methods in order to certify that the building meets the higher energy standard that this code is requiring. But where do these standards come but from? The, some of this stuff was removed where it referenced energy standards for building and started referencing IRS code. Yeah, this was the, what was taken out, um, or should say what was added, what was added was just a, an effort to um, expand and turn what was already in there into code. So we needed a definable standard. We found that in these um, provisions uh, that are associated with this uh, IRS tax deduction. Um, they're very detailed uh, and it's a known quantity. So that's the reference, reason for the reference to them. But just out of curiosity, before you would reference an IRS tax deduction, why wouldn't you instead reference the energy code? Right. Yeah, for the building standards. For like building this. standards yeah. and this not a, a, but beyond Because the today's, code. the energy standards today do not rise to the heightened energy standard that we are looking for for this building. The heightened standard is found within a building that is trying to comply with the 179D tax deduction. And so that those requirements of meeting the 179D tax deduction, not requiring them to get a tax deduction, but meeting the requirements that would enable them to get the deduction. Or codified in the IRS. Codified by the IRS will get to the energy standard that we are asking them to get to with this building. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. But just um, one note, the one thing that's in here is there's fairly sophisticated energy consultants are needed annually and I'm going to defer to Andrew, but some of the things that are in here requiring us on a reporting basis, consistently moving forward, isn't something you would normally do in a rental building like this, but oh, it's the way it's written. Yeah, it was a one-time thing. Yeah, the intention was to have it a one-time one as-built test, not an ongoing annual Andrew, is that what you understood? Certification. Uh, I, the way that the, the IRS program that they've referenced uh, does uh, is intended to be a one-time test. I think there is some ambiguity in the language, Jeff, to your point, that um, there are parallel programs that require consistent reporting to ensure that the building operationally um, continues to meet the standards for the life of the building. I, I think it needs to be specific, I think, to understand what, what is required on the town side. So this subsection incorporates performance standards. It doesn't talk about reporting standards. Yeah, then in D, it's the testing is prior to issuance of CFO. So We'll take another look at it with that in mind, but I, I, I think we're on the same page. Can I ask okay. about section E in there, though? The that, waiver? Yeah, that seems to be new, and I'm not clear why it's the building inspector and not, it, not, who? Um, not part of the design. I don't know, just, or the, it, it says in whole or in part. I mean, it feels right, like it could all go away. If he, he won't. He, he's it's he won't never all going to go away <laughs> if this is adopted. But if there is a difficulty in meeting one of the performance standards because of something, I, I can't think of it right now. But there may be an instance where he may need to make an adjustment. Are there other places where he has yes. the ability to waive? I think that's in our bit, like it's in our bit. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. was just, just to standard. give him some it, flexibility. It wasn't there case. before, so I just wanted to make sure that I understood why it was added and why it's the building inspector. Are there um, the building inspector I, because he is the building sorry. official and the fire marshal? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Yeah. No, I, yeah. And um, and it says such requirements would be infeasible or impose an unreasonable hardship. Are there 
guidelines for that, or is that yeah, subjective? Yeah, he has, he has okay. guidelines for that. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I think that brings us to design, which is going to be a pretty heavy lift, but I also think it's probably informed by the conversation we had earlier. Mm -hmm. So before we get to design, there's um, on open space. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there, there are no um, standards or requirements or anything in the open space piece. And, you know, that that's a... Uh, that was something that you guys had mentioned was having like a minimum size. You know, seating, the... planting, lighting, that, yeah. that kind of language is often included. And that, that's the type of stuff that makes, you know, at least helps open space yep. be better rather than worse. Yeah, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good suggestion. Good point. Or, or yeah. um, uh, payment, payment in lieu of. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, do we want, of course, do we well, want payment in lieu of? I don't know do we want payment, payment in lieu of. Well, I'd rather have right. the open space, I think. No? Yep. Well, well, let me question, if it's in payment in lieu of, do we have to, uh, do we have to accept the alternative? The idea is that you can't do it on site. So there's going to be a payment, and theoretically, that money can be used to create the open we've space like part of creation. But I don't know that we've done it for not a single for, property. But that would require a minimum amount of open space. We have not right? done and it for that, This doesn't even talk about a amount of space. If you put in a playground. Right, it would require yeah, a minimum. I guess. But I'm we, not saying that's should, bad. No, I understand. Should we consider a minimum? What would it be? Minimum. I don't know. Yeah. What, I mean, what do they have now? I mean. Well, we can sort of provide it. Yeah. Come up with a number. I mean, I think this is how we make sure that the legislation is going to produce what we're looking mm -hmm. for is by saying. Mm -hmm. And add in um, Elmed's suggestion, too. No, I've got yeah, it. Yeah, seating, have it too. So my suggestion on design um, would be to let us go back to the drawing board a little bit before mm -hmm. we tackle that one based on the conversation that we had That's fair. Okay. first half. And the only um, caveat to that might be this bit about the fourth floor step back, um, my sense is that the board wanted to get away from that entirely. The idea that the fourth floor of the building would be stepped back some number of feet from the street wall to create some mitigated massing. I think there was a thought that that was going to look really weird, right? That was my thought was that that would look weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Why would it look weird? I'm, would it? No, I haven't Look really weird. studied. I mean, I right know. now the building is set back a few feet, right? I mean, the whole building is set back. Yeah, so but there's also the gardens that set back. This would be in the top floor. Right, I get it. I don't know. The ground level. There's already are setbacks. Yeah, so I thought that we wanted to wait for that. But the whole building is set back. Right. They're set back to the gardens. The building's not set back. What is in there? Two no. through four is not set back. No, but they're right. Just but the, lot, the first ground floor is set back. The ground floor, the the ground ground floor. floor. is set back, but the whole building is not set back. Floors two through four are at the property line. For those I portions that you see right now. The ones above. The, the I thought there was terraces. And then this is no. saying that fourth floor should be stepped back. Is it? Andrew, can you put up a rendering of the building, please? Here's a small one. Yeah, uh, give me a moment. I'll just make the point uh, again. This is where we're in kind of conflicting re requests uh, territory. Uh, I, I certainly understand the step back request. Um, it is a challenge technically and aesthetically to meet both step backs at grade to afford more public space and to afford further step backs from a street wall at the upper floor. Um, so we're trying to meet two things that are um, Kind of continually pushing the building matching further from North Greeley, um, which again is in contradiction to the street wall language, uh, which actually increases the amount of street wall that we need to provide in this current scheme. So um, I can pull up a, a rendering in a moment, but uh, this particular section coupled with the street wall and the public space requests is uh, as currently written, uh, impossible to meet without significant changes to the way in which the building is shaped and the way in which it meets the ground. Andrew, uh, can I, I, I help you here because I agree with you. And the language okay. that we're talking about now is language that I think came from uh, the planning board suggestions about um, design. And I, I first want to recognize that these suggestions are really not going to work for this building. It's, it's really for a different approach to how to what we believe, I think, still believe is the right way to, to deal with the public side of this, uh, the public interest of the project. 
So I agree that you really it, you really can't reasonably meet some of these requirements, and I would just strike them from the from the text if we're not going to uh, if we're going to move forward with this. Right. And I think a real <clears throat> certain zoning codes I've dealt with with street walls and setbacks. If your street line is divided somewhat like theirs is, you can take a certain deduction and not have that setback or create some other option. So it gets a lot more complicated than just saying you have to set back. So I think, in, and it's like, you know, we're, we don't have any, uh, you know, precedent for sky exposure planes or things like that. No, here. We don't. So I don't think. To just say have a setback, I think it's too much of a blanket statement to say for something like this. But one of the one of the things you might consider is that in this particular case, you can see where the buildings, those four building masses, actually project over the public space, and they project over to the property line. To the property line. And one of the questions is, is that appropriate for North Greeley? Is it appropriate for the Hamlet to have these building masses do right. that on the street? a little bit aggressive in terms of the mass of the building. So the answer to that from Andrew would be, well, okay, but this thing is so tightly packed like a Tetris, right, puzzle, that for me to move it back by you know, 10 feet is going to cause havoc, and I'm probably going to lose units. That's my guess is the response and we'll make but, pushback. But I'm, I can also be the devil's advocate and say that establishing that street line from Sarah Lawrence down there does um, do a benefit to emphasize that street line. And then you have an interesting setback on the ground floor. So I think I think there's 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 value to keep that strong sense of the street line as you're looking down North Green. Well, I don't know whether it, it actually lines up. I think they all line up. They is all Sir, line is up. Sir Lawrence actually on the property line? Susan Lawrence. Susan Lawrence. Susan Lawrence. Does Andrew? Do you know? Does the facade of the? I don't know if you can hear what's being said here. I can hear. Thank you. Oh, does the facade of the building line up with kind of the facade of the Susan Lawrence building? It does not. N not not at the upper levels. No. It my, doesn't. My it does not. It comes out further. It, it comes to the property line, and so I think uh, I, I believe. Again, it's, it's a little hard to hear some of the comments. I believe Tom's uh, uh, comment was something to the effect of that it would be um, impossible to to move this further from the property line. That's that's not true. Um, there are ways in which we could look at um, you know if the if the um, legislation was to impose let's say an easement um, that mandated a a mandatory front yard, uh, that would be something that we could look at. Uh, 10 feet, given the proportion of the site, certainly would be very challenging uh, to meet, given how narrowly it tapers at the northern end. Uh, but we can certainly look at that. And there is there is opportunity to uh, reconstitute the plan to, to an extent to take advantage of that. Uh, again, what we are struggling with is, is that, um, and, and this goes to, I think, maybe to the broader site plan review process, is that we could develop any number of design iterations that meet the left place dream. Um, and we could show those, you know, during the site plan review process. But what we're challenged right now is that we we don't have anything to respond to, uh, and so we're left to make minute changes that leave certain people dissatisfied, and we continue to make more and more minute changes um, at the detriment, I, I would say, to the project. So if there were um, specific requests about, let's just say, alignment of street wall, then that's something that we can respond to and study. But right now, we've never received that um, until uh, five minutes ago. Do you want it aligned with Susan Lawrence? So, hmm? Would you want it aligned with Susan Lawrence? Sure, I would take it. Stanley, Bob, what does that one use? Yeah, so it doesn't do it. The benefit doesn't. I'd love to hear from the members of our ARB here as to that architectural thought. Andrew, there's a ground floor, you know, storefront glass under that setback. Does that line up with Susan Lawrence? Susan Lawrence? Uh, closer to, uh, and again, this this view that you're seeing here was it, it is not reflected in the current plan because of requests that have been made in the interim. Um, broadly speaking, could we align the facade of that ground floor to Susan Lawrence? That is absolutely something that we can study and uh, and look to meet. It's just that that would be uh, it potentially might be in violation of the street wall requirements that we've seen in the latest draft. So I. I well, I think those three wall requirements are being changed. So, 
But also down to the right, you're not going to have another one of these off to the right, right? Because it gets so narrow in front of the railroad tracks. Right. If you were doing it on the other side of the street, you've got the opportunity for a big strip and you want to line it up, I think it's more important. I, I guess my concern is not necessarily um, Susan Lawrence. My concern is that you have this, uh, in the current design, you have this three-story building mass, which is four stories high above the, above the sidewalk plus the pitched roof, which is looming, I mean, I'm use the word looming, which is looming over the public space under it. And um, not only that, that property line is nine feet from the curb, from what I understand from looking at the survey. And that's a pretty narrow in a Hamlet kind of condition if we're gonna value those things and interpret it that way. That is, seems to me a little bit aggressive in terms of the character of the street, the character of the neighborhood. Susan Lawrence is an interesting reference point, but I'm, I'm not sure it's the definitive one. I would be more concerned about addressing um, the proximity to the curb line of those building masses. But, but I think this is where we, we start to get into the design of it, that we do have a modern building. And one thing about modern structure and, art, and, and architecture is, is the cantilever. So one man's looming is another man's cantilever. So we have a cantilever second through fourth floor. But a cantilever but, can be oppressive. It depends on where the cantilever is. No, I, but I'm, yeah. But it, it's a modern, it's a modern uh, kind of design. Element. I've seen modern, yeah. Yes, and mm -hmm. and I think Chappaqua, and I've said this before, we're a mixture of many different styles. We have the library, we have this building. I all appreciate modern. the juxtaposition yeah. of modern right. okay. to traditional. Okay. I love what they did to the Louvre Museum in Paris, and there are many, many examples of that that are quite, many, many quite beautiful. Many let's in, let's um, focus on that. So, the so, so, so <laughs> back to the street. We can so talk about about street about street I know, but, yes, so, yeah. I but, but I, I'm afraid of an oppressive, <laughs> uh, an oppressive feeling. Um, I actually hadn't realized the extent to which that projects from the, from the street wall, and so I wonder how it would feel walking underneath. Something Bob and like Stanley, that. so what are your thoughts on this as the ARB members? Do we well, the building on the corner to the left, I think, is, is sticks out further also, mm -hmm. right? Soon Lawrence is a little it's unusual, it's much, much bigger, and it works nicely yeah. because of the eating. I almost think if you didn't have that, it would almost be too much because there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So I think it works great with the animation. Um, you know, from an aesthetic and architectural, if it was pushed back a little bit, it certainly wouldn't bother me at all. I understand there is the square footage and the developer obviously cares about putting his volume of apartments in there. If he could squeeze it back a little bit and not hurt his apartments. It's a little, right. bit, it's a little bit. Let me just say this is not well, an hold on. Let's just Well, so, so the glass, yeah, how does, the, the ground floor glass, which is a high height, how does that line up with the Susan Lawrence building? Because I think that's going to be very readable as well. Yeah. So I'll just I'll just state from uh, we don't have a survey of Susan Lawrence. Um, I don't know if the town has records of that property. Uh, well, from what we can tell in public records, it is an approximately eleven foot uh, front yard step back um, from where we believe their property line is. Uh, and so, in some of these earlier versions of the renderings where we had a reduced retail, um, we had portions of that facade that were um, that were aligned. Uh, we've now increased that at, at the town's request to allow for more retail on North Greeley. So that's it. So technically, if the glass lined up as there's Lawrence, that's kind of a nice thing. And then it overhangs a little bit. But then again, if we're going to lose some of the retail in the store, it, it's a trade off. You know, there's all trade offs. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't bother me so much one way or the other. I, you know, ideally, maybe it would be nice to line it. So, so is that, is that, that image like after no, that, that sure. image no, doesn't, no. I mean, it doesn't look like a big overhang in the image. Well, Andrew, I think that your rendering is, is it, it looks to me like you're occupying with your sidewalk, you're, you're occupying, looks to me like at least a parking lane. That, well, for, uh, sure. I, this is this is built from uh, this rendering was developed uh, over the summer of last year, uh, based on publicly available information from the town of Chappaqua on uh, how the sidewalks and streets are laid out. Um, you know, fortunately, we we built a physical model that is accurate, um, and we've also provided two animations that show this in more detail. Um, it should you have particular concerns with how this view is rendered. Yeah, well, I I think it'd be helpful if if you put the curve where it actually is and is likely to be. This is where it is based on the information we have at the time. If you're, uh, I, I'm not talking about the time. I, I have your, I have your survey. 
and I've, I've measured it on the survey, and it's nine feet from the pro the curve is nine feet from the property line. Unless I don't know how to read survey, maybe you could look at that and make adjustments to that so that we have a good idea about better idea about what's happening here. I think once we kind of yeah come up with with this legislation, then maybe you can just do a new rendering based on that. We need to finalize what the retail is going to be, right? We're not going to, we can't render until we know what that first floor footprint is. Otherwise, this is all going to, we're not, we don't know what we're looking at. We got to narrow down exactly what that first floor is going to be. So that's what we're going to rely on you guys to no, do. No, no, I'm saying we've got to figure out what that's going to be. Yeah. Get Excuse everybody's buy-in, and then problem. we'll yes. yeah. I guess yeah. all I'm Excuse asking is the yourself. public Excuse meeting was supposed to start 90 minutes ago. It was. And I feel like this is what Meg meant when she kind of said that uh, the community is being excluded. So I think that we are going to wrap up in the next 10 minutes or okay. so, and then Thank start you. the public hearing. Yeah. Is your model accurate to the lines, the curve lines, storefront lines, the different buildings? Uh, you mean the, the physical model? The physical model here, yeah. It is accurate to the version of the building design that was submitted to the town in February. So is that, is that I mean, what, was, what was that then, February? I, I, if you give me a moment, I can pull up the plans to which that was model because again the, the ground floor has been Does it changing matter? don't we want to just decide what we want yeah and then they'll yeah. he'll make it match yeah, i mean i think i think so that so that we can understand so we get a better idea about what we want i think we it would be a good idea to know what the con actual condition is yeah and i don't know why i don't know why we have to redesign the retail in order just to move the curve in that rendering yeah, yeah i was wondering Simple the same thing to do sense. Okay, so rhythm, while he's whatever. pulling that up, let's just move on to the next thing and then we'll come back to this. Uh, that's it. That's so, it for tonight. Yeah, we're going to talk about the street wall. I mean, I don't mind keeping in that it is a crenellated design to mitigate mass. I think that's important to is have that, in there. Is that, just, uh, that word is new to me, crenellated. crenellated. And um, I was just looking it up and I just wonder, is that really the word that we want to be using here? And is that like a defined term? Crenellated architects, weigh in. Uh, I've never okay. really come across that in the code. <laughs> okay, I just that that came from Andy. Back. I think it's used uh, on uh, castle battles. Exactly. Like, I mean, we're not okay. like at war with the other side of where, yeah. Yeah, 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 I don't know. Don't really see yeah, I know. I don't think we're right? putting space for cannons in <laughs> but there. But that's the definition. So I just, I just want to understand what that like means. It. You know what I mean? Like, is that, to me, like, that's like a word that I don't know if that sends I, these guys off in a. I mean, I think it's supposed to mean that it's going in and leaving us courtyards. It's not one straight wall. Well, maybe so there's, there's a better, better word, word you guys this like. This was the word that Andy provided. So, uh, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll just quickly just note that that's the word we use to describe the form. I, I, I don't know how that would ever be justified in a that zoning code. We have the same comments. That, just, that, that word just can't be in zoning. So I, <laughs> that's meaningless. I don't. I just don't know. Why we need to describe it at all? Someone else will come in and build a castle battle. <laughs> that um, <laughs> you are uh, required to meet, and the consequence of that is the design that, that you propose. Why describe it as long as it's a lock? I think we're trying to put we it. We're trying to lock it. Yeah. As many. Yeah. Well, it could arrange. We were trying to done. keep it from being one straight wall. That would be. Yeah. Yes. Hence the crenellation. <laughs> well, we already asked them to go back and and look at that section, anyways, right? Yeah. All right. So you'll look at that. Okay. So, is this the what you wanted to pull up for us? Oh yeah. So this is the ground floor plan that is reflected in the physical model. Uh, this was yeah. submitted in uh, December and then presented again in February. So the lines, the horizontal lines at the curve and setbacks are those the same as what you are now? You've just kind of rearranged the components. Uh, there have been a number of changes to the ground floor based on a series of. I, I can't track exactly what all those have been, um, but but broadly speaking, the building in the most recent plans that you have in front of you, uh, we've we've removed a, a portion of the building here. We've uh, reconfigured. Parallel to the street. Are, are the lines parallel to the street? Uh, 
in these two locations, they are, but their their locations relative to the street have changed in the most recent plan. I guess I just want to know if they're accurate. I don't. Uh, we have a survey of the site, uh, which includes the uh, the site extents, and it includes the portion of the sidewalk along North Greeley immediately adjacent to the site. We have no survey public information uh, for areas beyond that extent. And so questions around, let's say, Susan Lawrence alignments or buildings across the street, we rely on publicly available information as published in the GIS database. Uh, but this is, you've overlaid this on like a Google Earth picture of. Yes. Yeah, so it yeah. should be, because it's did you Did you not there. go out and take measurements? We. We took measurements of all the building heights, yes, but we're not surveyors and we did not survey uh, Chappaqua. Of their yes, yes, property, yes. he's saying they yeah, didn't do so it just like so. We took building heights of the surrounding buildings oh, that model over there. there. Right. So when you're asking us the street wall, that we're looking at Susan Lawrence, when you're looking down the you street, don't know exactly we didn't how measure how many feet they were all But, but you, measured, you measured the sidewalk adjacent uh, to your property. Well, the, the surveyor did. We have a survey, a survey of our property. Survey. Well, where the question being asked is Susan Lawrence. Right. Like looking down the street at Susan Lawrence, we don't know exactly their distance. Well, you know, we, we were looking at the sidewalk adjacent to your property and, and the overhang and, and asking about the proportions and whether that was accurate. Right. And he's saying the rendering is not. But that is, but the rent, the picture isn't the picture. Uh, the, the that's okay. The picture, you know. And, and then real. we asked whether the model, the model, the model was, that. But the model that we have, the yeah, physical the model, model I agree. that is, he said, is was also, 100% accurate. Is that what you said? Not for that. Like this big. In terms of height, right? Is the physical model accurate in terms of the sidewalk and the overhang? Of our building? Yes. And we need a better, better than that model. Yes, basically. yes. The physical model is accurate of our building. At that point, we had a completed survey, and we utilized okay. both publicly available GIS data for the context, as well as field measurements of the existing building heights for the context to, to right. accurately portray those. So in the interest of wrapping this up, I think, I think that this group wants to see if there's any way to push that back a little bit. Is that what we were saying or no? No, without I'm, I'm not exactly I'm not. sure where it is. No. So without impacting the okay. retail. It's just don't. the overhang. You, you should get measurements from the curb to, to you know, string of dimensions going to your building, to the ground floor, and to the upper overhang. And you should measure from the curb to the Susan Lawrence building how that juxtaposes with your building. You should understand that. And even maybe for the corner building, it's not so hard to just measure the corner. Well, with the goal of what, just so we under so we can visualize it. I'm just a more accurate rendering. So it's more accurate rendering, rendering, rendering but it all ties into what do we want to do with the retail also? Yeah. Right. I mean, shrink retail, more retail. No. Well, the, no, the question is, is if you have to move it back the X number of feet, it's going to affect the quality of the retail. Then that's something the board needs to know. But that shouldn't. If it's just the overhang. I'm concerned about the overhang. Yeah. If we just that's, get the. That's really the, it. We can talk Maybe. around this, or we just wait to get the image yeah. that we need. And, and how much is how much overhang is there now, second floor over the retail? In, in the most right, in the most recent set of plans that you have in front of you, um, the overhang uh, has been somewhat regularized uh, because of the need to increase retail per the board's request, uh, and so the typical overhang is approximately three feet. Okay, that's not that's very That's not okay. All right. It's good. Okay. It's so good it's good in some ways, but it's not as good in others because it's, it's a nice feature to it, but it won't be looking at the sidewalks. Okay, the amount, all right. The amount of overhang is not the whole, whole story. It's where that where that building face is relative to the sidewalk and the curb above you. I, I, so okay, we just so need the information. What are our, what are our marching orders for the developer? Because I think they need to, or, or they're none, and we're just going to continue working on the legislation and have them not change anything. I think we were asking them to maybe look at that change that Andrew made with the retail um, so that it can be more viable retail space for anybody who's in it. Is that correct? Well, then you might want to put a minimum depth of retail space or something, or something that's achievable. Do you but want to wait until we get the legislation before we ask them to do more? That you know, we can 
Yeah, I feel like I we gave them some. Do what makes sense. And might you want to hear from the public before? We, we uh, are. We're yes. 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 After this. Um, okay, so I think you guys are going to turn around the, the legislation for us. We'll look at it at our next meeting. And right now, I would say don't do anything. <laughs> All right, so um, I think with that being said, unless anyone else has any thoughts in the working group, we can. I just want to say it's crenu late, so can we get more things together? <laughs> 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 All right, so can we have a motion to adjourn this? So moved. Um, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, okay, welcome to our town board meeting portion of our meeting on Tuesday, June 27th. Can I please have a motion to open the town board meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I apologize that we uh, are running quite, quite late. Um, so we're just going to start quickly. Uh, Jill, do you have any announcements? Okay. Um, I'm also waiving my supervisor's report, but I did have to just say um happy 14th birthday to emily vargas happy eighth birthday to abigail levy and congratulations to max strober who's a member of our new york uh, state special olympic games gold medal winning basketball team so we want to say thank you congratulations to our residents oh okay well happy birthday <laughs> um all right, so we are going to move right to public comment, new business, not um, not related to 50 North Greeley. We're going to open that as soon as public comment is over. So if there's any public comment or new business. I have one question. I hope you make it that quick. Um, on the, um, I have the RFP for the uh, commuter law. When are the um, visioning sessions anticipated to happen? Uh, well, first we have to pick a um, a vendor, and probably I don't know. We have to work with them. It'll either be at one this summer. We want to have pop ups where they would come to farmers market, things like that, and then it would continue through the fall. Well, I, I but would, we haven't even gotten there yet. It's, it's very urge, premature. I, I would strongly urge it. Well, uh, if it happens this summer, it's not so premature because there's not much time left. But I would strongly urge that not none of them happen this summer. It's very hard to reach the community in the summer. I don't think that's a productive um, use of one of the three visiting sessions. Um, perhaps you have a kickoff at the community day, um, which would make some sense. And that's a good way to publicize it and to tell people it's on such and such of these three dates. Um, but it's not a shred, correct? This is a public visioning session. Okay. But there would be more than three. It would be there would be separate. There would be three of those, but then also additional meetings with with stakeholders and constituents at like the farmers market or at playgrounds or wherever we may be to meet to speak with other people in addition to those three. Well, my suggestion is to make a, a big show of a kickoff. This is standard in this type of thing is to have a kickoff date mm -hmm. and. Um, it's just the summer's not the time to do it. I don't know what day community day is. Holly, do you know? September 9th. 9th. That's perfect. It's early in September. You can make a plan to have a kickoff day in a booth, and that would start the publicity for it. Perfect. Because that's key. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, we haven't picked anyone yet, but we're looking at it. Um, okay, is there any other public comment? Is there anyone online for public comment? New business. One hand. Hello. Hi. Can I go on now? Yes. Okay. When I, a new student to Greeley, introduced myself to a small circle at the beginning of the year. Wait, I was wait, wait. Hang on. Is this about 50 North Greeley? It's about public housing. Okay. So to kind of name. So do you want to, can you just hold that until we get to the, the public hearing portion of this? Do you mind? Oh, is it the, this is not the public hearing? Oh, sorry. Not yet. We're not there yet. Thank you. All right. So um, any other public comment or new business not related to 50 North Greeley? Okay. So now we're going to move to the public hearing related to 50 North Greeley and the North Greeley net zero carbon legislation. Can I please have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now uh, we're going to talk about the, the legislation. I know we did just have, as many of you are painfully aware, a very long uh, work group meeting, which um, again, we appreciate the members of the planning board and the members of the architectural review board who uh, participate in this meeting. Your input is always welcome and, and very necessary. Um, so following that, I want to make sure that we can open this up to public comment. Since I had you start already, uh, Clarissa, why don't you, um, you, you continue? Just if you could um, state your name and, and your address for the record. All right. Um, my name is Clarissa Covey. I live at 365 Mode Road. Right. And um, when I, a new student to Greeley, Introduced myself to a small circle at the beginning of the year, I was greeted with, welcome to Elitist Chapel Club. Months later, in another class, a girl mentioned the relief her sister felt when she went to college because she was able to escape from the Chapel Club bubble and its lack of racial and economic diversity. The fact that our town's population is notably monolithic because 99% of its houses are million dollar properties is why the Chapel Club bubble exists and why many people including the kids who live here, feel that Chapelga is constrictive and rigid. Affordable housing invites new faces, those who are outside the majority upper middle class demographic, into the population. Rather than being a cluster of expensive properties, Chapelga would be a place that people from a variety of demographics and identities call home, enriching the feel of the town. By allowing for cheaper homes to be built, a more varied student body could learn in our schools, which not only provides such an opportunity to more people, but gives Tropica the reputation as a place that helps people from all walks of life receive quality education. One of my classmates mentioned that those who would buy these houses would mainly be immigrants or hard workers and risk takers and have brave challenging and unfamiliar circumstances to better their children's lives. These children who grew up with such values would be a great addition to our school district and contribute to a sense of persistence, diligence and altruism at all six institutions. The tropical bubble would dissolve, allowing for breathing room for those who feel restrained by the town's homogenous nature. No more would a newcomer hear, welcome to elitist chapel club. The town's reputation of unyielding uniformity needs to melt away and be superseded by renown for being a place that fosters diversity, provides education to first generation Americans, and genuinely values cultural awareness, acceptance, and success among its people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, for those of you here in person, there are cards, I believe, in the back. So if you'd like to speak, please fill out your name and address on a card and just hand it up to up to this table here on the right. And Jill and Christina. Thank you. All right, but Lynn, since I just saw you hand in the card, <laughs> come on up. <laughs> Did you see that? So I, I just want to um, just stay here. I got a oh, Lynn Lambert, Tapqua, 55 Ridgewood Terrace. Um, I got um, nervous at the along the way, but at the end of the, the meeting with the planning board and architecture board, because you were about to give marching orders again, that you said, and so what should we tell them their marching orders should be? And I agree that um, I have a lot of, of respect and sympathy for a developer who has jumped through a lot of hoops and feels that he spent a lot of money on on Mr. Direction, where while we've been trying to get our act together. Um, that said, I just hate this building for our town. I just hate the look of it. Um, and it's not diverse housing. I, I don't know how it could be called that. Now there are not even studio apartments as part of the plan. And so it's gonna mean, I guess, one and two bedroom apartments that will rent for five to 6,000 or who knows what by the time it's built a month. Um, and a, a handful of, of um, affordable housing folks. And I don't see that. I, so it sounds like, you know, 90% of what is gonna be built is gonna be for the same people that 
this young lady was just talking about, um, who are all can already afford to live in Chappaqua. Um, they're doing fine, and um, not not worried about them. And creating some housing for them, that's okay. But that doesn't add any diversity. So I, I just hope we can take that off the table. That's not what this is. Um, things that we are not. And now I'm going to get very negative. Chappaqua is not a four-story town. Anywhere you look, it's one, two, or three stories. And other folks have come up with um, designs that show that we could do this in three stories and still get some more housing. But if we were to have smaller apartments and studio apartments included, um, one thing is that they'd be a little more affordable. So the way that it's designed right now, and I, I know that the puzzle pieces have been trying to come together. And I'm a capitalist. I believe that you should be able to make money, OK? But I don't think that this plan makes sense to me. And um, we are not, things we are not. So we're not a four-story town. We're not a modern-looking town. A few years ago, we did a big streetscape project. And what did we do? Something really beautiful. We made these antique-looking light poles and a clock in town that look like black wrought iron and speak to kind of an historic flavor, which this town does have. And so when we were very recently choosing a look for our town, it was nodding to a vintage, retro, historic, established 1791 but town. So I don't know how this fits. It's just it's just completely different than anything else here. Are we going to put those more of those antique light fixtures in front of this building? It doesn't make any sense to me. So I want it to fit what we do. I want it to visually fit. I want it to spiritually fit. Um, so this has been bothering me a lot. Um, the windows, even if I accepted all the angles and, and everything, the windows, there are no windows like this in our town. They're just completely unadorned and almost like a warehouse looking to me. Um, I don't get it. I don't get how that gets our town's vibe, our flavor. Um, so I'd like to see um, this revisualized to fit here. And I'm not trying to drive this developer crazy. I really am not. I'm sympathetic to this. But that it came this far without really getting much input from the community who moved here because it looks the way it does and because we have great schools. But this is a small town, old fashioned -y town vibe. This is not. And so I don't, I think it's going to be visually jarring if we do something even remotely like this. And I wish we could have a design that fits. And I think that's important. It's important to me. If I wanted this, I could look in other towns that have a lot of modern buildings and architecture. I didn't. Most of us did not. So thank you very much. And thank you all who volunteer here, our, our architecture board, our planning board. And for those of you who are way underpaid for all the work you put in, who sit here on the town board, I want you to know I appreciate you. And I, I just hope that we can get this right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have Cassiopeia Sant. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yeah. OK, so we, the youth, have come to this meeting to voice a new and more radical position in favor of affordable housing. Earlier this month, we came to the town hall to speak in favor of the 50 North Greeley development. And today, we have come to declare that it is not enough. As I'm sure many of the people here know and have already mentioned, uh, there are five or less than five affordable units in that building among 42 total units, and the rest are luxury. We refuse to settle for this. We want real progress. Chappaqua should be encouraging the construction of actual affordable apartment buildings, not having a small cluster on the side of a luxury development and calling that a victory. We want zoning that will enable this kind of destruction. For example, the zoning exceptions that were suggested to allow this 50 North Greeley development, we want to see that kind of exception for affordable housing, not to uh, indulge the profits of a landlord. 
So our prime demand is that the town mandate that the site's developer include a majority of affordable units as part of the zoning exception. Or maybe even make it so that all of them are affordable units. So uh, we would support that. Chapago can also encourage affordable housing, not just at the 50 North Greeley site, but all across the town by creating you know, subsidies to encourage affordable housing and by having the local government create public housing owned, for the, owned by the people and serving the people. Um, if met, our demands would seriously simulate population growth in Chapaqua and make our town more diverse, equitable, and inclusive. This is the kind of development that our comrade Cl Clarissa Covey was talking about uh, when she said, uh, when she was talking about an end to elitist Chappaqua and a diverse town. Uh, we want real, real progress towards affordable housing, you know, a, a, a building with a majority or an entirety of affordable units. Um, I'd like to say one more thing uh, before I go. At the last town board meeting and today, Many of those who opposed the 50 North Greeley development started off by saying that they did want progress in Chappaqua, but that the luxury development simply wasn't the way to do it. So I stand here today and say to all of those people that now is your time to show that. If you genuinely support progress in Chappaqua, like you said, and felt that the 50 North Greeley development was the wrong way to do that, we have presented a new plan right here one that creates a concise and definitive path towards more affordable housing. So make true to your word and come out in support of us. Uh, and to those on the town board, I hope that you seriously consider our proposition for affordable housing. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Naveen Arjun. So I think that adding more affordable housing and multifamily. Can you talk can you to the microphone? microphone? Just, just angle it down. Yeah, perfect. perfect. And adding more affordable housing in North Chappaqua by rezoning possibly the whole area, starting with North Greeley, would benefit the community by increasing taxes for the town or decreased taxes for the people who already pay taxes for the town. This could be used to fund the library or schools to redo the roads or possibly like we could put into like other things such as building like state owned housing. And I think that this would make Chappaqua a more friendly place to live in and having more people in the town, it will encourage development for retail, further increasing town revenue and creating more things for kids and teens to do well outside and fitting as many units into North Greeley is the first step. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeff Zeigler. Zeigler. Oh. Oh. Jeff Zeigler, 651 King Street. I'm here um, to just voice an overall comment on the process. Um, you know, I know Jeff for, we, we, uh, we did work together about two years ago. Um, in that time frame, you know, we, I've developed many projects across the country. Um, for this, you know, seeing repeated public comment periods where the same things, the same naysayers are coming out, right? We're just, I think the last public, at the last town board meeting, you guys spoke about, well, the same things keep on coming out and out and out. We've got to get to a point very soon where there's a vote, where, you know, we're, we're as a taxpayer, we're using a lot of our resources, your time, where quite frankly, you could be spending your time doing other things for our community. Um, we should go to a vote on this soon, in the near future, if you vote in favor of it, and the naysayers are against it, they can file a lawsuit, they can put up a bond to, um, to prevent the frivolous lawsuit, and that's a standard practice. If you vote against it, the developer can either leave what's there right now, they can go ahead they can appeal, they can sue, but you know, I, I went back and looked, I think you guys have spent like 40 hours on this, if not more, on this just in public meetings, not private meetings. There's got to be a point where our resources are focused on other things that are not just focused on this one property, but the entire community. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, is there anyone else who wants to make public comment? They don't have any more cards. My name is Maggie Ferguson. The comment that I was trying to make before is that um, 
on that list of things that was mentioned, it's, it's how this how it fits in the neighborhood was not mentioned. And uh, the ARB, for every homeowner that goes with the project, looks at the neighborhood. And that included 91 Bedford Road, where they looked at the neighborhood. And that building is 14 apartments on 0.8 of an acre. It's almost the same size as 50 North Greeley. 14 apartments and retail on the ground floor. Most people who talk who come up to us at the farmer's market say that they're, they're okay with that project. They like the way it doesn't stand out, the way it fits in the neighborhood. And why this project? I haven't heard you two say anything about the neighborhood. You, like, you love the building, but I haven't heard one mention from the ARB about the neighborhood and how it fits. And I have watched ARB meetings and they always have pictures of the neighborhood, always. And it's just being lost over. It's another concession or another agreement for this project to make it happen. It, it, how it fits in the neighborhood, I can't imagine. But the comp plan, the number one goal, embodies years of work. And it's a 2017 comp plan. I keep going back to it because it's important. It's bigger than all of you. And it should guide your decision making. The number one goal is the scale and density of the neighborhood for development should fit the neighborhood. Doesn't mean it can't be somewhat different. It doesn't have to be the same. We're not a tourist town where everything looks the same. But that's the number one goal of the comp plan. And it's how the planning board has looked at things and how the ARB looks at things, except for this. Except for this. I don't get it. And I hope that some concession is made. When I say the community is being on the outside looking in, yeah, we get up here. We, we're not part of that discussion. We've never been part of the discussion, ever. We can come up here and make comments, but this project hasn't been scaled back at all in the scale or density. I mean, the three units are off, but it's still 50 units an acre. And again, 91 Bedford Road, which is almost the same size lot, it translates to 17 and a half units per acre. 17 and a half units per acre. Why this one is, you know, what is it, you know, three times the size, I have to, too late to do the math accurately. But the community keeps saying scale it back, or a big chunk of the community says keeps scaling it back. I don't care if it's 53% in favor, 47% against, or somewhere indifferent. There's a big chunk of the community says it's just too big. It just doesn't fit. They count too. But nothing has happened to scale it back and scale and take it back and scale it against it. And it's, that's what's wrong about this process. It doesn't fit the neighborhood. And that's an important neighborhood for our town. But they're being treated as though they don't matter. And I just don't understand where, where, why it's gotten this far. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. All right, any other comments in person? Come on up. Can, can you just, Maggie, can you fill out a card too, just so we have it for the record, just give it to me? I promise I'll fill it out. <laughs> Hi, my name's Tim Clem. <clears throat> Sorry, Clem. Live at 25 Longview Lane. I very much appreciate all the work that you have done, continue to do, as well as the ARB and the zoning board. Anybody who works in public uh, government like this, you, you are angels for giving up so much of your time. Um, I just have a couple thoughts. I haven't really prepared anything, but I love all of the public comment, the participation. I was lucky enough to move here six and a half years ago. I guess we kind of timed that right. My property has increased in value more than I ever could have imagined. Love living here. Um, 54 Hunts Place, I drive by it every day. It's four stories. It's right by the, um, the railroad. I appreciate that it's there. It's similar in scope, I think, to what's being proposed. It hasn't changed my view of the community at all. The Rite Aid closed, I don't know, six months after we moved here, and it's just an eyesore. What's there today is an eyesore. It's, I, I feel sympathy for the property owner. They need to figure out what to do with it. Um, what's being proposed here seems perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, the, I live in a very modern house. It was built 1979. It's not colonial, it's modern. Does it fit in Chappaqua? Sure. Diversity of architectural styles, 
And of course, as all of the high school kids here are saying, diversity of people is so critical to what is going to make this town thrive for the next 200 years. Um, I would love to see this project be approved with 10 feet of sidewalk or 12 feet. I don't give a, I don't care how many feet of sidewalk. I'd just like to see the property redeveloped in a meaningful way that will encourage more development. It's, it's right by the train tracks. It's, it's a tough property to make into a, a gem. And I think what's being proposed is in line with what a lot of reasonable people would expect. It's a free market. I'd love to see more affordable housing units in it, but there's constraints to that. Um, keep doing what you're doing. I'd love to see it be approved and go forward and see some development in that area. It can only benefit by having more foot traffic, more economic reason to go downtown other than to drop your kids off at the karate place across the street. So that's my view. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all right. Uh, is there anyone else in person who would like to speak who has not yet spoken? Thank you. All right. Is there anyone online with their hand raised? If you just need no hands, no hands. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, in that case, going once, going twice. All right. In that case, um, I would say we. We have meetings uh, in July on the 11th and the 25th. Now, I, I think we had some work to do on the legislation, which the board may want to workshop before yes. just going to the public hearing. Yes. So, uh, so I, I mean, we and we are still need to see the secret before we can close this. Anyway, all right. Okay. So why don't we entertain a motion to? Um, Adjourn this to our second meeting in July. I don't know. When is that? The 25th? That's the twenty fifth. Yep. Okay. We had we had, had penciled that. Sorry. Penciled we had penciled anyway. that in for the seeker review. So okay. Okay. What, okay. Is, what is the timing on getting the report back from the traffic consultant? I'm hopeful that we'll see it on the eleventh for that meeting. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure. Yeah, let's push them to see that. Yeah. Uh, all right, so can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing until uh, June, July, July 25th at 7 p.m. or as soon as it comes on the agenda? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. All right, Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you. You too. All right, next, uh, I think we're just up to resolutions. There were some administrative items. I think we skipped over. Yeah, you skipped over in the. Uh... Right, so um, uh, in the work session, from the work we session, did, they, yeah, we could um, hit them on the, the first thing, which is the. Um... We got it, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to read Go ahead. I'm going to read some people. Why don't you read through? I, I, and if anybody has any questions, I'm going to zip in my in my super fast reading voice. Go ahead. All right. I, I move to adopt. Uh, I have one way this and the consent agenda below. Does anybody have any of the, any questions on any of the items on the agenda? No. No. So can I get a second? I did. All I in did. favor? Aye. Aye. I move to approve the payment of claims in amount of two hundred sixty-eight thousand nine hundred seventy dollars eight cents listed in the summary pre-check writing report. Each of our detailed report, both dated June 26, twenty six, twenty twenty-three. Checks will be issued in amount of each claim in this on Wednesday, June twenty eighth, twenty twenty-three. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to authorize the hiring of Paula Apollo Areda to the position of a heavy motor equipment operator within the Department of Public Works. Second unit at the annual salary of $64,120.63, effective July 11, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to authorize the appointment of David Horowitz to the Environmental Review Board uh, for a three year term effective retroactively from November 15, 2022 to November 14, 2025. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to approve the memorandum of agreement between the Town of Newcastle and the Newcastle Police Benevolent Association for the term commencing January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2026. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move to adjourn. 
Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.